Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, a little bit of long time no see. We got had some stuff going on, scheduling stuff, work annoyances, but we are back, uh, and uh, we are back for our 50th episode of Planet Film Live. I'm one of your hosts, Sean Monk. I'm brother host TJ Cornwell, and today with us we have the return of Mr. Brandon Friedman. Hello, yeah, Brandon. Thank, thank you for having me on again. Super fun doing these. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. You got your camera there? there oh, yeah, we're good. You're good. <laughs> Probably could have done that in the 20 minutes of, of setup time. But um, yeah. all right. So, yeah, welcome. So like uh, we said, we got Brandon on here. We got a special show for you guys. Uh, it is the 50th episode. I uh, can't believe that we've been doing 50 of these. If we didn't take any weeks off, we'd be at like 70. But <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like from when we first started doing this, yeah, yeah. we'd probably be like 70 or something. Yeah. But life happens, bro. But life, in the in the immortal words of Dr. Ian Malcolm, life uh, finds a way. You know? There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So today we are going to be breaking down our rankings of the Jurassic Park franchise. No. Uh, as you can tell by the title of the video, we got some uh, Black Widow talk coming, as well as we're going to go, the three of us, uh, reveal our personal top ten lists. Um of the mcu so that should be fun uh, a little bit later uh but first off what's been going on with everybody how's everybody been doing out there um i've been good i haven't really watched much per se mm -hmm. i've had like a gap where's my diary there it is um i watched base jam 2 which was Heard of uh it. it was something I watched Pig yesterday, which, Sean, you asked me where I saw that. Yeah. Went to Regal by myself. Let me, okay. So, when I bought tickets Sunday morning, right, I went on the Fandango app like you do, and I said, okay. And I, the night I looked before, I hadn't, I hadn't bought them yet because I didn't know if I was going to go or not. And I woke up Sunday morning at, like, 11 or whatever, and I was like, you know, I'll go. And I bought tickets, and there was two people in there, right? And can I get there, I, so I, I sit which, down. Which location? Uh, the mall, the mall. location, okay. Galleria. Yeah. Um, so I sit down right in the row and one person comes in and they're walking up the steps. I say, please, please, God, do not come to this row. You know, I'm at the end. I'm in E10. So I'm right. You know, if I have to get up to the bathroom during it, I can just walk out. Boop, mm -hmm. Done. Comes up my row and I go, all right, you're in this row, but you better be sitting E1. And he, he did not come to E9, so that was good. He came to, like, E5. And I was like, are That's you fucking still, kidding me? You're crazy. That's still man. too close. No, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like, I texted what? Danielle, and I was like, this motherfucker. You were human, bro. I was, mad. I was very yeah. mad. You know, I'm sitting here with my Welch's fruit snacks and my water, and I'm just trying to, you know. And there's another little rant I want to go on about freaking ads. I got there a little early, but it was pretty ridiculous. Um, and I'm like, this motherfucker is really sitting here. But that wasn't the worst part of it. Another person comes in. Oh, my God. And these two people that had already bought tickets for me, that it was empty, right? And then they bought them, and then that's when I bought them online. This mo next motherfucker comes in. One guy, they're not together, comes in. So I, feel, I felt bad for more for the guy that first came in. This guy sat maybe a seat away from the other guy. In the same row? In the same row. Did you move? No, I didn't move. I was going to be that guy. I wasn't going to be that guy. I wasn't going to be that guy. Bro, there was people crazy. in the row behind me, too. Okay. So I was oh, like, oh, you know, I what am I going to do? Moved. I would have definitely um, moved. If there's one cluster in the entire auditorium, I'm yeah. not sitting in it. And it literally is not <laughs> like, a COVID thing. I was just, you know, oh, it's yeah, like, no. if there's nobody in here, why are you sitting in the same row? Yeah. It should be somebody in row B, somebody in C, D, E. And then if there's two, two in one row, and that's it. That's all you need, you know? There's enough rows for everybody. Uh, and then my other, like, little thing is that there's, I was, I, I swear there's 45 minutes of ads. Like, I, I, I was like, is this really what it's like? What was your show time? <laughs> it was 12, 15, I want to say. you get into the auditorium? I got there kind of early. I got there at, like, noon, I want to say. But it felt... Oh, yeah. It was, it, I, I realized that, but see, I always hear people are like, 
like places like obviously we didn't have an arc light around here. But like people say, oh, I go to an arc light or an Alamo, and there's like you know five minutes, and that's it. So why is it with the big chains that it's like we're gonna kill you with ads and trailers? They want that new. They want the money. They gotta get that Maria Menounos cash. Maria wasn't even on the screen. She was on it for like two seconds. And by the way, what? The beaver was on the screen though, wasn't he? Yeah. Was it just ads? Were there trailers and ads? Are you complaining? It was trailers and ads. Oh well. And there was a Candyman trailer. I'm not a big horror guy. Then trailers, right? Forty-five minutes. It was ads and trailers. I know. You know, it. It just felt like forever. Like, give me something. Like, there wasn't even like a Regal student film like they usually do, which I was a little upset. Because oh, yeah. as soon as the trailers were over, I go, "Well, I gotta sit through the Regal mm-hmm. student film." That's usually yeah. about a minute. There was no student film. This guy's complaining um, he didn't get two movies for the price of one. <laughs> yeah, but Mar- <laughs> Maria, Maria, when she was on screen for that little short period of time, you could tell it was like a Zoom call. Like her oh, mic, the like there was no mic. Absolutely. And yeah, the mic, yeah. yeah, the background was kind of yeah. like kind of glitching out a little bit. Um, I was uh, I was telling one yeah. of the people that um, one of the employees at the at my theater. Um, yeah, I went. I was at work for like fourteen and a half hours the other day, mm-hmm. and when I got out, I had to go get gas, and at the gas pump was Maria fucking Menuno. She was again. I was like, oh, yeah, it was for me uh, me Sunday, too. I think it was Sunday. Yeah, (laughs) Sunday. I had that, too. Um, But then. Oh, the other thing was, I told you, I was like the newbie games. There was like 50 of them. I was like, where did this come from? There was like a Fast and Furious one. And then there were some that I remember seeing while cleaning the theaters. Mm -hmm. Um, So I watched Pig. Did you have the beaver? Did I what? The newbie beaver. beaver. No, I didn't. I don't. You didn't I didn't have see that the one. Newbie Beaver. They're, oh no, I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. He's everywhere. Um, right. So I watched Pig, and I saw watch Lethal. I watched three things actually. I watched Pig, Lethal Weapon for the first time. Very funny uh, '80s action, and uh, Casino, because I never seen that one. Hoo-ah, right. And it was on sale, four K, uh, five bucks on Best, uh, not Best Buy, on uh, Amazon. For digital. But yeah. For digital, yeah. I had been like thinking about getting it disc. Like I was at Best Buy to get uh, an SSD for, or I think it's hard drive from Xbox because I'm already at capacity with my Xbox. Like I've laid down like five games and Is it's it already like, yes. Um, it only came with, I think with the OS on it and everything, it's like 300 something that it gives oh you. <laughs> yeah, it does not give you. Yeah, something like that. And, um, I saw it like sitting there on the shelf and I was like, eh. and then I didn't, but then I ended up seeing on uh, the just watch it app or whatever that tells you where all the movies are oh, yeah. that it was like f- on, there was on, you could buy an Amazon for like five bucks. And I was like, Oh, I'll just do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's what I've been up to. Just kind of chilling. Um, trying to think of anything crazy. You know what? Actually, I'll tell this story. It was a while ago. Oh, here we go. So this is very not movie related at all. Um, so I want to say about two or three weeks ago, I'm sitting here, right? You know, Danielle's not home and just chilling, you know, doing work, whatever. I don't know. And it was by about 10 o'clock at night. So it was one of her last shifts, I believe that she came home from. Um, and she walks in and, you know, we're getting ready to go to bed. We're going to our room and I'm sitting down, I'm laying down. And I look up, and I see one little tiny spider. I'm like, wait, 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 this was like two or three weeks ago. This is a while ago. I this is a few this weeks ago. Like, I thought this I just was like didn't. Ago. I, did I tell you the story already? You told me like. Personally. Oh, I told you. Did I tell but, you, Brandon? No. Okay. I th- wow. So I mentioned something about this. I felt like, like that was. So I told. Long I said ago. this. <laughs> I told one of my my coworker like a few days ago, um, because we were talking about bugs at our job the one day and. And this happened like a few days later. So and I see one little spider and all of a sudden I look around and there is at least 50 of these little spiders on the ceiling. <laughs> and if you know me, I am not a spider oh, yeah. fan. <laughs> I like spider man. Like spider <laughs> brand, spider brand, spider right brand, there. spider brand and not- uh, Twitch. Right there, he's he's pointing right <laughs> at it. He doesn't he doesn't even know he's pointing at it, but he's pointing right at Spider Brand on Twitter. Look at that or Twitch, sorry. 
What were you so saying, Brian? Yeah, I have a funny story of like why I picked that name, and it's it's all comes from. So obviously, you can do like, Spider Brand is a play on words instead of Spider Man, but like hey, why yeah, would yeah. I choose Bat Brand or whatever. Like why yeah. would I choose Spider? And the only reason I did is I took the whole Bruce Wayne thing, and I was like, the thing that I hate most are spiders. Yeah. And so, like, I would want to use that as my name to just, like, try to get over the fear of spiders. And I, mm-hmm. to my credit, I'm a lot better with them. But, like, man, I – if you telling me that story just, like – uh, Yeah, no. it was, like – I was, like – this is – I was, like, this should be – I'm going to start a screenplay. Like, this is, like, I'll just make a whole movie out of this. The night it happened. And we went around with tissue just boom, 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 boom. I, like, I will tell you right kill, now. Kill, 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 kill. As soon as I made eye contact, I would have moved out. I Like, I would have – Oh, my we did not sleep. I, I would have left. We slept in the living room that night. We did not sleep in that that bedroom. Uh, I would just vacuum them all up and then just take everything and just dump it in. Right, yeah. And just, just throw I, out the vacuum. I, if it were up to me, I would have burned the apartment complex to the ground. <laughs> 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 um, and uh, so we don't know. Like We think they were, because a few days, a few nights before, I don't kill the spiders, by the way. Danielle does that. I don't do that. I'm not touching that shit, you know? Same. Not um, Danielle killed this, like... Now. Danielle killed the... What? I try to save them now. I try to, like... I t- oh, I I'm not saving... Like, <laughs> I go on my way to, like, try to take them outside. But before I would kill them. But, like, it's... There was a decently right sized one the one day, like, on our wall, and Danielle killed it. And we think maybe that was, like... The mother. The mom. The yeah. And... We're pretty sure they were like coming out of like our ceiling fan, um, and then I got um, and then Danielle also uh, played this joke on me a few days later. I was playing Gears with Brandon. I don't know if Brandon, you remember this? Yeah. When I was yeah, like, this is the story I remember. And I was like, oh, I gotta go. And Danielle photoshopped a picture of this r- decently sized spider on our bathroom wall, and she said, "Help." So I had to run in there. I was like, did you kill it? She was like, I was jo- it was Photoshop. And I was like, well, that, that was just mean. That was a low blow. Yeah, it was a low blow. But uh, yeah, I was I was like, this is like a horror movie. I I don't want to. And I was not, I, 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 it's been a growing thing. Like, I was never like as a young kid, like I was never like, oh, my God, like, I, you know, but now it's like. It's just kind of gaining momentum and I don't like it. Yeah. I would like to fight it somehow, but I don't know if I'll be able to. It was always the eight eyes for me. That just like freaked me. That like yeah. phobia of like multiple different like circles in a pattern yeah. is like what I have. And I just like yeah. hate it. And then I learned that they have eight eyes and that's just like yeah. freaking out. Actually, my head. first fear with spiders, I do recall, is in the original Spider-Man, Sam Raimi, when that spider crawls down and I bites hate Peter. It. I, hate I hated like, that. On the, top of Will and Defoe agree Goblin, he scared the shit out of me too. But so, it's yeah, the, you see the amazing. you see the like yep, he, exactly. he like exactly back and like he really <laughs> wanted to latch on. The the lab in Amazing Spider Man one where Peter goes into Oscorp mm, and that one like, too, that's like that is horror movie it's level. Brands of all I yeah, I hate that. That was the worst part of the movie. I really like Amazing Spider Man one and two, but like that's mm-hmm. different. I'm hot takes everywhere but yeah because like, it's I fucking think... sam raimi he's like oh i'm gonna evil dead this shit <laughs> put some <laughs> creepy ass shit in here yeah <sighs> fucking hell but yeah that's that's all for me that's <laughs> yeah yeah so i've i've had you know i've been um what are the kids say? i've been chilling you know um mm-hmm. i've been getting a lot more and i know i've talked about it on the podcast more recently that i've just with work and a whole bunch of like other personal stuff going on, I haven't really had time to watch movies. And I just decided like a couple of weeks ago that I was just like, I'm going to take every opportunity Dance. that I can to yeah. watch a movie. So as TJ was uh, talking about before we got started, I've watched uh, in the entire yeah. month, I've watched like, I think 31 movies, but just wow. in the past, like, what would that be? Seven days. In the past, yeah, in the past, like, week, a little over a week, I've watched uh, 20 films. So it's it's been a wild ride. It's um, a lot. And I am just going to run them off real quick. I want right, to get your thoughts do. on whatever. I'm just going to say the name of the movie and the star rating. Okay? That's it. Okay. Your yep. stars? Or what, my what stars. Yeah, my okay. stars. Yeah. Okay. And now, 
Brandon, I don't know if you know this. I've talked about this on the show. TJ knows this. I tend to rate things a little higher on the spectrum. Like, some people are like, well, a three-star, that's 60%. That's fresh. That's a good movie. I'm like, if the movie's good, it's going to be like four stars. If it's okay, it's going to be like three and a half. If it's yeah. really, if it's bad, it's going to be like three. I, I don't know why. I know that's not how everybody else does it. That doesn't match up with Rotten Tomatoes or anything. But I always rate things higher. So just if you're like, that has four. What the hell? Like, that just to me means it was good. Uh, okay. I usually have a differentiation between three and four. And four is usually like if I would rewatch it easily again. Like if it's on TV, I'll rewatch it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's a, I think it's important, too, that everybody has their own. Like, you know what I mean? The stars are good to... The f- out of five is, like, good to set a standard, but each person, it can mean whatever. But All right, mm-hmm. so I'm going to start with the 10th because I started a trilogy on that day, so I'm going to talk about that. Um, but I'm specifically not going to the 9th because I'm not going to spoil what I gave Black Widow, obviously. Um, Mission Impossible, four and a half stars. Mission Impossible 2, two stars. Mission Impossible 3, four stars. The Prestige five stars uh oh i'll add i'll also add a word if it's a first time watch i'll say that as well uh inception five stars shutter island five stars titanic four stars wolf of wall street five stars catch me if you can four and a half stars uh spider-man first original spider-man uh four stars space jam to a new legacy half a star uh tenet finally i know we said we would never talk about it in this channel again but tenant uh was actually really good uh four stars minority report uh first time watch of tenant and space jam and minority report uh but minority report first watch four stars fargo oh that's first... space jam 2 by the way did you say that yes yeah space jam oh, okay. Okay. So, yeah. I like he said space jam 2 and i was like you're coming to two stars and then he went the new legacy F-star. or whatever. <laughs> yeah. F-star. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, Fargo, first time watch that I can, like, remember. I definitely watched it when I was younger, but not, like, to watch it. Mm-hmm. You don't remember. Like, yeah, right, I don't remember, yeah. like, what happened. So Fargo, first time watch, four stars. Uh, Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby, five stars. Uh, <laughs> the Usual Suspects, uh, first time watch, four and a half stars. Uh, Prisoners, Five stars, of course. Uh, Joker, four and a half stars. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, little little gem from uh, 2019, uh, five stars. Spider-Man 3, what the hell? Oh, I never logged Spider-Man 2, so 21 movies. Um, oh, yeah, you, yeah, I noticed yeah, that you missed that. Yeah. So Spider-Man 2 was somewhere in that mix, um, five stars. Not first gotcha. time, obviously. Uh, Spider-Man 3, obviously not first time, three and a half stars. I enjoy that movie. I'm a big apologist for that movie. I think if you take Eddie Brock out and keep everything the same, you could tone down the dancing like a little bit. But I get what he was going for. I get what he was, what's what Raimi was going for in that universe. Exactly. Um, so I'd say three and a half stars. Um, <laughs> Cabin in the Woods, uh, first time watch. Your, your eye. Cabin in the Woods, first time watch, um, three and a half stars. Wow! And then I took a, a one that. day, I took a one day break from uh, movies, and I watched all of Euphoria. Oh, okay. Which was yeah. one of the best experiences I've ever had. I, th- I think that show is is absolutely ridiculously like off the yeah. charts, incredible. Um, five stars, obviously um being john malkovich first time watch three stars wasn't this i never seen that uh and then i I won't say what i did for black widow but i watched that today um speaking of quick sorry speaking of toby mcguire did you see that tiktok he was just in the park it was like spider-man in the park and And he's like (laughs) i I really do like i don't know man i really I almost, like, I was going to message TJ about this, but I almost, like, wanted to, I had this huge, like, inspiration to do, like, a Mr. Sunday movie style, like, voiceover, like, type, not quite video essay, more like comedy and just, like, kind of 
going mm-hmm. like free flow but i almost i wanted to do one of those for the raimi trilogy because that was the first time i had rewatched them all in a row like that in many many years like maybe a decade yeah. um i think i think they are like as a unit i, I think they're fantastic like I, I just think that trilogy is really really incredible um aside from some issues in, in all three movies to be honest i don't think two is as much of a you know untouchable you know perfect masterpiece as people make it out to be um but mm-hmm. that being said i think it's a fantastic movie um like i feel the same way about the dark knight but like i still give that you know probably like either four and a half or five stars right um but yeah i just think they're, they're uh those movies are incredible and if, and if toby uh and andrew are, are i'm gonna try and watch those two uh in the next uh upcoming days hopefully um but if either one of them or both of them are coming back, I mean, I think it's nothing but uh, fantastic for the fans and for them, mm-hmm. which is what I think. But yeah, but yeah, being John I Malkovich, I really, I expected more from Spike Jones. From as much as I love Spike Jones' other work and stuff, like um, where the wild things are and her, obviously, I think those are two really, really great movies. And this was like, I got what he was going for, but I was just like. I don't know. It kind of like fell flat for me. Don't know. Yeah. What were you saying, Brent? Yeah. I, yeah. I was just going to say, like, it's funny that you, you had mentioned like two movies that I, so I haven't watched as many movies as I should. And I, I was going to have a lot of time over the summer and then I picked up How work and everything. You? And I know, but I've like, so I've tried to like watch like, either explanation movies of like things that I like maybe wanted to watch or whatever. And I know it's a lot different, but it's funny that like catch me if you can, um, the usual suspects and cabin in the woods were all movies that I had on there. And I had watched like things about it. I didn't know cabin in the woods had that kind of like story and I won't spoil anything, but like mm-hmm. the, the, the ending yeah. or whatever is like that. Um, and then everyone was like, uh, Catch Me If You Can was like the best Tom Hanks movie. So I was like, man, I really got to go like try and watch it. Like I didn't know what it was about. And you know, I found out that it was like based on a true story and everything. And I don't know. I haven't never gotten around to watching it. And I just, I always thought that it was, and you gave it a four and a half stars. And like a mm-hmm. lot of people give it like, like I said, like Tom Hanks best movie. And there are a lot of Tom Hanks great movies that I put up at like the top of the list. And, like, it, it's just something that I've, like, been meaning to do. But I did watch Black Widow today, and I thought, like, man, I really got to get back on this. And so mm-hmm. it's, it's just been a lot of time consuming things going on. And then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you figure a movie Crazy is two year. hours. Yeah. Depending how long you stay. Away. Like, I'm. Again, I'll tell you, man. I, I go to sleep at, like, 12, like, every single night, unfortunately. So it's like, yeah. you can fit. So if I get home at five, I could fit me. two in there. <laughs> yeah, my wife is constantly watching TV shows. So, so I usually like, i get, like, I get home shows. I get home at like uh twelve or one, so I usually go to sleep at like five or six. So mm. that's that's helped a little bit because I got nothing else to do in the middle of the night other than you know watch. I found it a lot easier to do it that way when I was mm-hmm. back working at the movie theater. For those who don't know, that's how we all met. But like. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, when I was working back at the movie theater, like when I would come home, and I found it a lot easier. And I found myself watching a lot more movies off the screen, even though I would go see the movies in screen, like on screen. Right. Like I, would, I, would, I, like I remember watching Godzilla and everything, like right after I get out of work, and like I have vivid memories of like getting out of work, and I'm just like, man, I have nothing to do. I'm gonna make some food because I'm hungry, and then I'm gonna turn on a movie and then try to go to sleep right after. But like. Mm-hmm with every like i just get so exhausted after work and i'm like i gotta take a nap and then i'm like i catch a show like i'll watch like two episodes of whatever chrissy's watching and then i'm just like all right well like i i don't have much else to do and then <laughs> gaming and then it's yeah bad. so i guess gaming is taking up a lot of my time rather than and like i i i do hang out and play games with my bro- older brother and everything like i play like that's where this t-shirt's from but um it's just like I'm constantly like into gaming and like for those who know I'm big into magic, so Magic the Gathering. 
right. magic. A lot of time. <laughs> magic. Yeah, which is time. Great, a big magician. Magic Inspired yeah. magician. He's big enough. I'm you for a magic show. A yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my uh, fucking God. <clears throat> But yeah. Uh, oh yeah, the other thing. So other thing, uh, I got. Um, so I got. Uh, I won't go into more detail, but uh, I have a terrifying year ahead of me because uh, over the next six months, I'm gonna have nine or eight or nine uh, dental appointments, which is great. I got. I was looking over my insurance to, you know, see because yeah. with COVID and stuff, I hadn't gone to different places in a while. So I was looking over insurance, and uh, I was like, "Oh, what does my dentist thing cover?" And it basically covers everything. So I went in, you know, checked out what I had. It was not good. It was not good. A lot of <laughs> child. What's wrong with your mouth? Like your mouth? Yeah, like my like, like your my, teeth. Okay, yeah. I just thought I didn't know if you meant like <laughs> like things. <laughs> no, I <laughs> no, it's with my hair actually. Um, oh my god. No, but continue. What's it um, a lot of uh, floss when you're a child, because even 100%. if you think even if you think you're taking care of things as an adult, things when you're a kid, and then the one thing I will say is tooth back here, I have to have a root canal done on. Because the no. fi- a filling I got when I was a kid came out during COVID, and, and I never realized it. And so it's, oh. it's really deep in there, and I was like, oh, great. So That was my root canal at the beginning of the year. Yeah, that's the one I'm I really not looking forward to. It was a I had a root canal. I've never had one, very so I don't – I'd rather yeah. not. I had two. Really. Oh. Oh. That's such an ugly word. Root and canal. I know, yeah. I know. Oh my god! It, it, I was, it definitely adds to the suspense of how. I was, it I was secretly hoping yeah. that um, my insurance wouldn't cover it. <laughs> just so I was just like, which is Mine not doesn't. good in the in the long run. Um. Oh yeah, I can't even. I can't even imagine. Yeah. Like I get reimbursed, well, but it's just like I'm not. I don't have any dental insurance, but like I get yeah. reimbursed for partial. It's like a quarter mm-hmm. of it. So like, but I mean, whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to feel better yeah, but yeah. exactly <laughs> um and then the last thing i watched that i forgot to say was uh it's real short but um so this is from uh matt barry and a couple other people but it's uh garth Marenghi's dark place uh which is like a very memeable show it's like it's a show that was made in the 2000s that was meant to be like made in like the 1980s or like mm-hmm. made in like made super low budget i think in the 90s about the 80s like it's very hard to describe but it's like it's the same guys from like the the it crowd and stuff um but it is just so funny there's six episodes they're all on amazon uh i i I watched it because you know i liked you know the memes and like the funny like clips i'd see of it on tiktok and stuff but then ryan johnson actually tweeted out that it's all on amazon so i was like oh i'll check it out it's only like six episodes, like twelve to fifteen minutes an episode, but it's like some of the funniest shit I've ever seen in my life. Um, right. If you really like that, else. like sarcastic, like um, like dry humor and stuff, it's just so funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty much everything's going on been going on with me. Brandon, you have anything that we haven't talked about already? Not really. Like I said, just with school, pregnant wife, trying to get. You know like, what they say, pregnant wife, I'm, pregnant life. Yeah, hmm. it's, it's, I'm trying to get all my time in now before the baby comes, so. Mm-hmm. I thought Chris Hogan was a lacrosse player. He's playing for the Saints now? No, no, he's trying out for the Saints, and this is in the middle of the year for uh, lacrosse. So he's still playing lacrosse. Oh. But well, it like, says after workout on Monday, Chris Hogan signing with Saints. <laughs> oh, so they confirmed it? That's what, well, that's okay. what Mike garofalo says oh, yeah. from yeah, the yeah. nfl network so yep i don't know i would uh take that in pretty good uh who's gonna play quarterback run with that interesting yeah i was gonna say yeah mm-hmm. um yeah i think that's it for me i would say i w- i stumbled upon this video uh i think it was just on tiktok or something I don't know where Hugh Jackman was. If he was at, if it was some concert, because he had oh, drumsticks yeah, yeah, in his yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like, did Hugh Jackman play the drums? And yeah, he it was, was like, like a live show that he that he was doing for a couple of years. Oh, and this like fan was like in the front, 
and he like the I think I guess the dude must have been like do the Wolverine like you know thing and he's like going <laughs> full like Wolverine is <laughs> in the camera they told the camera and the dude does it it was so it was really cool but I was just like where the fuck is you Jackman yeah. like with drumsticks I just love that like you can <laughs> in that video like even though it's like somebody behind everything that's happening taking a video yeah. but, like from like 10 feet away you can just see like right before the video cuts just like the pure joy on Hugh Jackman's face that like he right. like, did that with the fan like he's just he's just yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> like it's just like isn't this the best like let's like you know what yeah. I mean? like oh my god he's just such a great guy and i will say too i mean the prestige is one of my favorite films of all time but this in this rewatch man i i think it might be a good movie i think it might be like top five in my opinion uh and, yeah. and i love christian bale but watching this and uh prisoners this past week man hugh jackman and i think i messaged tj this even i was like Hugh Jackman needs to do, he needs to keep bringing these like super dramatic, like incredible Oscar caliber, Oscar winning caliber, uh, you know, performances. Cause he just, mm -hmm. he is like, what's the word? Not to use it in like a weird connotation, but he is like dominant on screen. You know what I mean? Like he just, for, especially yeah. in prisoners or he, he just, yeah, exactly. Like, he just like literally commands like the 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 scene like mm -hmm. some of the stuff with him and uh you know say what you will about Terrence Howard but he he's good in prisoners and some of the scenes with the two of them where you know Terrence Howard doesn't want to go along with what's going on and Hugh Jackman is pulling him in the other direction and stuff and and just some of the silent acting just like the looks and you know the little like I don't want to say like growls but like mm -hmm. just like the like grunting that Hugh Jackman does that's like you know, are, are you fucking doing this with me or not? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. he says all that without really having to say anything. He's just fantastic. Um, yeah. But yeah, also, like, I mean, the best scene in that great guy, maybe the best scene in that movie is just him, uh, you know, him, Terrence Howard and him holding Paul Dano against the wall and Hugh Jackman beating that sink with a hammer, oh <laughs> and, like God, screaming at it's Paul Dano's one face. shot and stuff. Yeah. Like, not to spoil Whew. anything, but like, just in that scene when he has the hammer he's like yeah he's like you're gonna make me use this and then like you can tell yeah. that you're like oh my god he's really gonna do it and it's I, like, I, yeah. and, but then that's the great thing of that movie is that you're like no but that's the thing is that this guy yeah. isn't a monster he's just mm -hmm. like at the absolute end of his right. like psychiatric rope, rope. yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like like he just has nothing left and he's not going to hit this guy in the face and kill him with a hammer, but mm -hmm. like he's going to hit everything else in the room. That's inanimate. Right. You know what I mean? Like, uh, Oh my yeah. God, what a great movie. Um, um so yeah. I don't know what we, you had planned for just, right now. Just like the pictures. What pictures? Oh, of uh, Ben Affleck. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if you wanted to talk about maybe some, cause it's been like three weeks mm -hmm. or two weeks. Maybe there's like a few things. Um, you talk about whatever. So, for me personally, uh, a second new Dune trailer came out last week. I believe it was. Oh, yeah. Sean reacted to it. Uh, I was unfortunately at work at, at the moment, so I could not. Um, Ray, did, did you happen to watch it or no? no? I don't know if you did. No, okay. Um, I personally Amazing thought it was trailer. very good. Very good trailer. Um, I I I like the music choice. The music choice. Every time I watch the first trailer, the music choice in that trailer works more for me. So I think I like the first one a little bit better, but I think this this new trailer kind of lays out everything um, very well, and you kind of get a little backstory. Um, again, I'm hoping this, you know, there's no uh, sure thing that this movie's going to get a sequel. They are already in development of a show that goes off the movie, um, or I think it's it would be a prequel to the movie um, for HBO Max. Um, so hopefully, obviously, this movie gets, you know, a second, second you know what or a era sequel of a prequel it is. Like, is it like uh, twenty years ago or like hundreds of years ago? Like, I want to say it's like it's a, it's I th I don't know if it's like hundreds of years ago. Um, but it's a while. Ago. I think it is. Yeah, it's a while ago. Um, Oscar Isaac looks looks fucking fantastic. Like I the the, the man's beard just is unmatched. Like you can't. Um, the only man. That can rival that man's beard is a man yeah. that we know and love, and that is friend of the Anthony. show, Anthony. 
yeah. That's it. I, and I Anthony's got to gotta get older because Oscar's got the salt and pepper. He's like, yeah. Crazy. <laughs> he's just, he's um, like, he looks like Oscar Isaac looks like his face was like chiseled out of like marble or something. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Like, <laughs> um, so that was cool. Uh, we had Leslie Grace casted as Batwoman or Batgirl. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Batgirl, right? Batgirl, uh, for yeah, HBO Batgirl Max. For movie. HBO Max original um, movie. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so I, she was in, think, in the um, Heights. Do you think that'll be uh, set within the DCU or do you think this is kind of a. I think it's extra just its Earth own thing. 2 thing or. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, when you say Earth 2, I don't know what that means. So. But. Like, just like I think an it's alternate just like Earth. Its own thing. Yeah, I think it's probably some alternate timeline type thing. Yeah. Um, so that's I'm excited for. Um, we have Steven Yun, Daniel Kaluuya, and Kiki Palmer mm-hmm. starring in Jordan Peele's new uh, horror movie, Nope, <laughs> which I thought was a funny name. The The poster doesn't tell me anything. It's a cloud with looks like light hanging off of it. I don't know what that means. Well, so it's, you know, I'll, I'll say, too, I love the way that Jordan Peele markets his films because he yeah. always drop the first thing he'll ever drop for a movie is the poster. He did, the poster. He did it with Get Out. He did it with Us. And now he did it with Nope. And mm-hmm. I think that is so cool. And I think more more uh, studios sh- uh, should adopt that because it's like the the poster is exactly what it is. It, the poster is, should be the original teaser for it. It shouldn't be that like yeah. we have no look at the movie and then we get like a three-minute trailer and then a poster like a week later or something. It's like mm-hmm. put the poster out as soon as you start production. Give the feel, give the vibe – you know, market the actual production of the film, too. Like, and that's what Jordan Peele does with all his films. And I just think that's so cool. And it's just like, boom, mm-hmm. directed by Jordan Peele, starring these three fantastic performers. And here's this ambiguous, you know, one sheet look at kind of the yeah. vibe that we're getting. And it just keeps you guessing and stuff, but it doesn't give yeah. away anything. I just love posters. <laughs> yeah. Um, Brian, did you see uh, Get Out or Us? Yeah, I saw both of them. Did you which what did you did you like both of them? Yeah, I thought they were too. Us was really confusing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like I got it, but like I yeah. it was one of those things where like I probably should rewatch it, but then I just I do what I do and I just watch right. like, an explanation video and I was like, all right, yeah, right, that makes right. more sense. But like I yeah, I got what they were going for, but get out yeah. I thought was fantastic. That, that oh, yeah. was so great. And I think that's why I mean you, you see the fruits of the labor with how well he's just doing just being is putting his name on something now is just like, and mm-hmm. people are talking about him creating a subgenre or whatever. And it's just like, he's mm-hmm. just trying to do his own thing. And right. I saw that too. So I, I thought those movies were really, really good. Um, Yeah. I think that was a general consensus. There's like us was good, but like get out was like, so like, it was so far and away. Just like, yeah, it was mm-hmm. so good. Um, Last two things I want to touch on real quick. Um, the last one being the biggest one, the biggest news that I've heard in a long time. Oh my god! Um, oh my god! Where is the story? Joe Biden stepping down. Uh, no. Basically, just scrolling, discussing film, just looking for anything that interests me. Yeah. Um, can I? Can I? I didn't notice this either. Yeah. So I didn't notice this either. But that. So I watched the Jackass reveal trailer. Oh, the trailer! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I didn't know the ongoing beef between bam and wait what the, yeah bam is not in it because he has a beef with the director and now the is director it, has a restraining order is the director oh, still yeah. jeff tremaine yeah. is he directing the yeah. fourth one yeah oh, okay. so he's awesome. he, he has a restraining order on bam now as of i think two days ago and then wow um, i did not know about any of this knoxville problem. came out with a statement saying that they just want him to get better he took to tiktok and saying that he's gonna try to <laughs> yeah he's trying to like um boycott the movie he's trying to get people to boycott the movie and he was like it was like really depressing because he was like really emotional talking about like not being okay able to go back for somebody who i've so i've seen whichever one the high five one is i think that's the third one Three. yep um and i think i've seen uh, one other one which one is bam again can you remind me I mean, okay so i i know you didn't grow up during this time but viva la bam, I, yeah, he's, yeah. Like, he's yeah. a skateboarder viva he was LeBan, really good man. friends with um oh, yeah. oh with bam margera yeah, he was yeah, friends I remember. with uh, the actor who died, uh, Ryan... Um, Dunn. Ryan Dunn? Ryan Dunn, yeah. And right. so he was really good friends with him, and after his death, like, Bam, like, spiraled really, really... Yeah, gotcha, he's like that gotcha. now. 
and like he was nothing like he was like a skinny dude skateboarder and like he's st- like viva la bam is like a spinoff of jackass but like man him his he was family, like the like, like was johnny like knoxville the, was the main guy but bam was like the breakout like yeah, went it's out like, his oh, own okay. type of star thing yeah, it was like yeah, the, was the triangle. It's it's Bam, Steve. I do remember him. Yeah, and Johnny Knoxville, and I just yeah, I thought that was so crazy because I was like, damn, I didn't see him in there, and like I saw the original thing where he's like boycott the movie, like they're not allowing me to be back, and I like looked in more into it, and he's yeah, he's got a restraining order, and Knoxville said like they just they wanted what's best for him, so they're not mm-hmm. adding him to the movie or whatever. Oh, wow. And, yeah. Yeah. And honestly, huh. it, I did not know that. Doesn't, doesn't surprise me that much because you look at. You know, it's not like Johnny Knoxville hasn't been working, like, since the last Jackass. Like, he's had, like, action yeah, he's points been, and a couple yeah. other things. But, like, action points specifically, where it was the one where he's, like, runs the theme park, like, the super unsafe theme park thing. Like, you look, there's a lot of Jackass people in that, and Bam is not one of them. Like, I mean, this, I would not be surprised if this has just been something that ever since, you know, Ryan Dunn, unfortunately, passed away, it seems like Bam just kind of went off the deep end after that which you know it's understandable i mean he's a huge part of his life and stuff mm-hmm. but yeah it's just it's something unfortunate i don't think it's going to be yeah. mended anytime soon yeah um speaking of the jacket i thought that trailer was fucking fantastic i can't wait to see that movie um uh my last two things well i also have a little small thing sean i don't know if you've kept up with that carly has not gotten any better uh just coming back to you on that one Bam. um we, me and Danielle watched an episode yesterday. Got it was two, it's got not great. Two. You got season two. I'm shocked. If you uh, can personally. get Gibby back in for season two, I think there's hope for the show. There's hope for the show. I told you, just give give our Carly and Freddie. They're they're give them together. Get them exactly. get them together. You're all good. Um, Michael B. Jordan is developing his own Superman project for HBO Max. He'll focus on Val Zod. Yeah, he may well, even star in it. Who I can you who's Val? Okay, who is so that? Can you tell all, me? First of all. Is? After he went into the press like a couple weeks ago saying, I think some characters should stay. What I, I was like, and I'm not like, I'm not angry about it. I'm just, this is the first right. time I've ever I've talked to another human about this. I was like, bro, you literally just, which I totally agree. I, I think there is arguments for, you know, take some of these original characters, you know, put a little twist on their gender or on their race or on anything like that to have more representation. But I also agreed with what he said, which is like, you know, but sometimes there's people like Superman who, you know, Superman is Superman. You know, you don't have to change these people. You know, he can be a white guy. He's just a, a beaconing, you know, light of hope, uh, you know, of a white guy. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. Like, um, and I was like, yeah, totally. And then he, he just it turned around and it's like, no, he is making one. So I was just like, well, mm-hmm. what was the point of him making that statement? But anyways. But I do understand Zod. he's not playing Kal El, he's playing Val Zod. So it's basically somebody he's related to Zod in the comics. He's black, okay. he's he's basically an African American Kryptonian um who who becomes another version of Superman in the comics. That's so, okay, so I, I don't, I'm not meaning for this to sound like uh, sure. you know, any type of way. But like what was the whole like why didn't why was the argument make you know why wasn't this just the argument to get a movie with this guy? Like, why? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, if he's also Superman, why does it matter? Like, it's just a name. Like, it's really just not Kal-El. I think think that's where maybe Michael B. Jordan was talking about was the, the specific question he responded to was why was like, it was something like, why do you think Kal-El should like do you think clark kent should can like change gen- can change race and be oh, an american okay. person and i think he's like no you know so maybe he's like well there is this yeah. black superman character right because that, that kind of that's thing. my mindset it's like well there's already a character that is so like why not just use that character like why yeah. does it have to be again i'm not saying in any type of way like oh clark kent should never should only be a white guy i don't really i give two fucks i don't care but like was that people on like I feel like people on Twitter were like saying like people on Twitter would say like, you know, we need, obviously we need more diversity and, you know, maybe you make Clark Clark Kent, not a white guy, but do they maybe not know about this character? And that's why they're saying that, you know what I mean? Like, I think that's possible. I mean, I think there's a okay. lot of, there is, we like, we always have to keep in perspective. Like 
of the comic book movie genre watchers and fans, that's right. the majority of the earth nowadays. <laughs> the, the, the percentage of those people that are yeah. comic readers or even not comic readers, but maybe like follow YouTube channels, they do explainers, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. That is like, to quote John Campia, that is less than 5% per, less than yeah. 5% of that of that pie of comic book movie watchers 5% have comics have comic knowledge or will watch YouTube explainers to know what the characters are that kind of thing so it's like i think a lot of the and then you look at how many people are on twitter obviously it's a lot more than that so i i think there i think you're right i think there are a lot of people who a vocal minority of the subject and b they're they're not fully educated on the mm -hmm. subject that they don't know that this character exists they just see oh black superman well why do you have to make you know clark black why can't he you know why can't you just make a new character and it's like well they don't have to make a new character this character already exists if you actually read anything past and that goes into the whole thing too of just you know reading past the headline which is a big problem right. for all social media platforms people can't read past the past like the teaser sentence basically um, but yeah, I think you're dead on the money or right on the money with that one that I think people just, um, either don't know or don't care to educate themselves on it. That mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, Brandon, is this something you'd be excited for? I don't know. Have you watched man of steel or any of those like Superman returns? Or how do you feel about uh, Michael B. Jordan? I, okay. I really like Michael B. Jordan. Um, Superman is always like whatever. I think Superman gets a really bad rep, but like it is also justified in a lot of ways like it's he just is way too powerful i like right. it it's because, so hard <laughs> yeah it, it's it's so hard to like see how anyway there's any way he can lose so like it's just <laughs> a green stone but like whatever. yeah anyways so man of kryptonite cool. it's called kryptonite <laughs> right green stone so, <sighs> i like man of steel because i like learning about the origin story i did really like smallville as a kid and i didn't know it was superman until like maybe right with danielle on that one yeah i do smallville. like yeah smallville was really good i thought for majority of the episodes that i watched i'm not a fan um, well i mean i was this was also when i was like eight or nine years old and i used Big to like fan of superman I, I would only have I would only have like seven channels and that would be on what Smallville would always be on 23. Yeah. So like, mm -hmm. it was just like one of those like CW. It was always on. I used to watch it before Supernatural. It was this whole thing, but like whatever. So I, I mean, Superman is cool. I really like Michael B. Jordan, but I mean, it, they have to do it right. Superman is not something that I really get excited about. I didn't, mm -hmm. I thought, I thought Superman v. Batman was mediocre. I thought it was better than a lot of people gave it. Was he on that before, one? But like, uh, maybe not. <laughs> I mean, I, I think a lot of people rate it really badly. I thought it was a decent movie that I can just like sit down and watch once. Mm -hmm. but, like it's for just... sure. Now, did you see? I mean, I guess you did not watch the Snyder Cut. Do you even no. have? Do you have HBO Max? Not anymore. No. Oh, okay. I was just interested. Did you see the original, the original Justice League, the one that came like in out in, th mm -hmm. in theaters? Did you like that or no? Uh, no. Okay. I'm with you on that one. Yeah, I. With you on that one. I fell asleep. I was like the. You know, I don't blame you. It's it's not a good movie. The villain was forgettable. I thought Batman vs Superman, like everyone said, should have been the original Justice League movie. I thought it was like you could have introduced a lot of them in that and had a role in all that, but like it's just the build up was really slow during Justice League, and then like it it just got. Like the villain was not believable. Yeah. When they when they got Superman on their side, like getting Superman to come back and the whole it was flash, over. yeah, like the <laughs> the flash scene where he's like running around him and he like actually can follow the flash, like that that yeah. scene was pretty cool. That was like, cool. I, I yeah. Thought that, yeah, I thought that was pretty well done. But like, I just like I said, the, the and Brandon looked up at the street and said, "What the fuck's wrong with his face?" Just... <laughs> uh, oh my I god even, i didn't even notice that until after oh well like yeah it's, it was just, just like horrible. one of those movies that i was just like uh, i gotta go see it because it's, yeah. it's trying to be the avengers let's see if i can get into it but spoiler ben affleck i think is a really good bruce wayne not acting wise just a look when i think of bruce wayne and when i read comics and like look at pictures of batman like that's what i think of bruce wayne 
Like I, yep. I grew up with the Batman cartoon and he has that really strong jawline, which is Ben Affleck and just a lot bigger. Christian Bale was a lot thinner, a lot leaner. Right. Leaner, I mean, yeah. He, he was, yeah, he was toned, but like he was a lot leaner. Yeah. I, th- I think of Batman as yeah. like this big, grown we might, guy. When we talk about this, we might need to get your uh, vo- Batman voice rating. Uh, who are you go. the biggest fan of voice wise? Voice, um, what, we, who we are you get... the biggest fan of? And let's hear your own Batman voice. No, I don't know about that. We don't need that. Uh, <laughs> the last thing, this is the biggest news that I saw in the past two to three weeks. Oh Huge God. news. Oh my gosh. I'm reading all, by the way, I, I said that, I think I said this earlier, but again, I'm reading all this off discussing film. Just so you know. The Wayne Johnson suggests he won't return for Fast and Furious 10 and 11. I was heartbroken to see this. I thought it was confirmed. Uh, this other tweet he uh, says, also laughs at Vin laughs. Diesel's assertion. Oh, Freddy. Oh, okay. Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson responds to Vin Diesel's claims that their feud was tough love to get a better performance at Fast and Furious from Dwayne. Quote, I laughed and I laughed hard. I think everyone had a laugh at that, and I'll leave it at that. Come on, guys. Come on. Vin Diesel, Vin Diesel is hard to work. I the love Vin Diesel. I love. I okay. I don't say that. I don't love Vin Diesel. I like Vin Diesel. Family, love family. You know. Uh, I have not seen Triple uh, X. I have not seen Riddick. Um, I have not. Se- I like him as Groot. Even though he says Groot. Um, <laughs> I like him as Groot. I can't. I can't. Um, <laughs> but I, when I gave my Fast and Furious rankings, and I think this is across the board. A lot of Fast and Furious fans will tell you, Dwayne Johnson took the Fast and Furious franchise to another level. When he joined, no. Uh, Can I argue oh. this real quick? Oh, well, okay. He, he did not take it to another level. He rejuvenized the franchise. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that because I think the the first couple were pretty good. Like, I mean, like really good. Oh my God, the second and third one are my two worst ones. <laughs> Just stop. <laughs> Just stop. What? Are you serious? You're, not, you're, going to this. you're a big um, fan of Too Fast, Too Furious. I like Tokyo Drift better. He likes Tokyo <laughs> Drift. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everybody loves the DK, the Drift King. Yeah. Um, I just really Tom, like I can't scene. believe you're alive, huh? I, he was such an unforgettable character. It was just like the scenery that, I mean, it was also my adolescence. It was when I really started like, right. it was yeah. Need for Speed Underground 2. It was yeah. when I started oh, yeah. to street racing and cars. That was right. on constantly. Yeah, like it was just something that like I grew up with. It's It's got nostalgia. It's not a great movie in per se mm-hmm. but like it's just my favorite because like it was that time it was that movie um it was the first movie that actually had like a, i mean i guess jesse could count in the first one but like it had a main character die oh yeah jesse oof that was a rough one yeah so like well i thought like at the time he did <laughs> right that's what he said main character die at the time he was dead right i am more um, we don't need to go there. Just leave him there. <laughs> but uh, come back for prequels, like that, like and five yeah, and four and five. Yep. Yeah. It, um, just... and I will say in the ninth one, I'll tell you right now. I don't know if you're gonna see it. Uh, this is really a spoiler. He probably should have died again, and he didn't. But we'll leave it at that. Um, eight. That was the last time I couldn't. I couldn't walked out at eight. Yeah, fate. Um, I, I oh yeah. What? I think it, like, it was the last draw for you when he turned the torpedo, the rock. No, nope, said I got it. it. Oh, it was. What whole, was it? It was a whole storyline when I found out that it was. Um, he was in the plane when he finds out that like. Uh, oh, he's a kid. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, "This is it. Like, I I can't watch this anymore. <laughs> They're trying uh... to shove too many things." And then, like the ninth one, now is his is his brother. Oh my god! Oh yeah, John Cena. Never heard about him before. Even, and apparently, I'm his sister didn't know either. John's... It seems like <laughs> Wait, Michelle Rodriguez. Character? That was always like, my big yeah. question. <laughs> no, Michelle what? Rodriguez is not his sister. You know that, right? No, what's no, no, no. Michelle Rodriguez. I, I don't. Um... I forget her name. It's his girl. It's his like wife or girlfriend. I forget if they're married yeah. or not. I think they are. Letty. But like, no, Letty, what's... yeah. What's I forget her name. Actress's name. That's the sister. I'll look it up. Yeah, I always forget her name. She's in a decent amount of stuff too. I just can never remember what her name is. Uh, her name is uh, Jordana Brewster, right? Yeah, That's Brewster. Yeah, yeah, Mia. So, yeah, yeah, Mia. So, she, uh, yeah, 
the whole thing was like, I don't know. The the first one is so great, but like, whatever. But Dwayne Johnson um, did rejuvenize it. To go on to your point of of what you were making about these movies, but yeah, I think it's pretty um, crazy that yeah. he he did announce that. I'm not surprised. They uh, him and Tyrese too. Like Tyrese, like saying this whole thing. Too. Like it was a while ago. It's like Ty- Tyrese. This is like the only movie you do every year. Like, can you please hey, stop? Hey. Like, hey, he is in big Tyrese Morbius. defender over here. Listen, He's in Morbius. Sorry, I forgot. That's gonna be his big break. My mouse is like busted right I now. I also think that the whole and to bring this up, but like the whole death of Paul Walker. I think he was like. Uh, oh. Well, I, do you want me to tell you the tease at the end of F9? Do you want me to tell you? Well, I'm just saying that. Like, he's the, back. I'm the saying, actor, he's back. That's the tease. <laughs> no, it but I'm saying stunt. that like the. No. Yeah. So I think that rifted the whole thing. Like he was the glue that held that group together. Like he was right. just like the constant. Yeah. And um, yeah. Now it's going to be John Cena. I don't, I don't mind. Like I like Vin Diesel in the movies. I just, it just seems mm-hmm. like he's like a an alpha male and it's hard to be an alpha male when you have Dwayne Johnson in the room. Right. He's like the alpha male of alpha males yeah. now in today's world. Um, and also it's like, uh, there's all those rumors that, you know, nothing could be proven or anything, but like of all the contract stuff with Vin Diesel that like, you know, there's rumors that, you know, all the fight stuff that like he can't lose a fight ever yeah um like he's the only character that's allowed to be either semi shirtless or shirtless like i mean there was stuff though with jason statham too right where he could only get hit like four times or something like actually there was all that stuff that came out um and it's like you look like i think it was john camby or maybe robert meyer burnett that um said this but um you know you look at f9 and what is john cena's biggest selling point his physicality like he's huge and their fight sucked and also their their fight fight sucked and john cena is never in anything less than you know a regular like crew like crew neck t-shirt in that movie like he's never he never has his arms out take your shirt off john come on well no but i'm saying (laughs) like vin meanwhile vin in every other scene you know he's got his he's got his sleeveless like with his you know untoned arms and stuff and it's like it's like Normally in a movie like that, that would be a big selling point. You know what I mean? Like you would want to show off John Cena's physicality. And right. I think that goes, I think it's got to be true. I mean, that he's got all those things, you know, that, that he can't be one up, you know, it's his franchise in his eyes. And it's like, mm-hmm. you know, say what you will about the guy, whatever. I just feel like he's one of those people that's a little more on the difficult yeah. side to work with. Right. Last, yeah. what last thing I'll say about Fast Furious is, um, Brian, did you see Hobbs and Shaw? No, see, okay. I, I also didn't like the whole thing where they like. It ruined six and seven. Then, they are the main antagonists in both movies. There's a reason, like it makes sense. Like, Shaw mm-hmm. one has a reason. Uh, then Shaw two has revenge, which is Jason Statham. He wants revenge on the crew, and then it's just like, oh, we team up because we're getting out of prison together mm-hmm. and then yeah yeah that whole thing Fair. Um, if fate, fate of the furious just yeah all i know is for fast 11 i just hope that maybe we get a little a little something from the rock that's all i want you know i'm actually like a pretty big rock may not he the rock may not produce the highest quality of movies but he's always fun to have in any movie like he's mm-hmm. always a great time, whether he's leading it or he's Looking just kind of Jungle co-star. Cruise. Uh, I kind of am too. Him and Emily Blunt might be good together. Um, um so let us know. Me. Let us no, know. That was uh, do you guys stories. think that there is hope for the Fast and Furious franchise? Let us know. You can tweet at us. You can comment down below. Can Vin Diesel and The Rock, you know, put aside their differences and redirect this torpedo of a franchise? Um. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, but yeah. And uh, so now moving on to the... Oh, you good? Oh, there you go. Yep. Uh, I don't know why. I just went black. <laughs> but... uh, now moving on to the last story that we have here. Um, I don't know if you guys just want to look it up on your phone or anything to get the pictures. But we have... Uh, oh, yeah. I'll get it on Twitter. Yeah. 
I got the you. latest, uh, the latest in the long, <laughs> seemingly very long line of set pictures and leaks coming out from the Flash movie. We have our first official look at uh, the Batfleck back in action. Uh, we see he's got this brand new, uh, pretty cool motorbike. Uh, yeah, it, it looks it's very, very. Yeah, it looks very, very in line with um, Batfleck's with Ben Affleck's Batman's, you know, other vehicles and stuff. It's got that kind of like almost like exoskeleton car kind of looking, mm -hmm. uh, you know. But but yeah, this gives us our first official confirmation. So there was always rumors saying that, um, you know, that we will get both Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck's Batman in this movie. Very little confirmation of that until today. Um, so what are your guys' thoughts on having uh both michael keaton and ben affleck's batman in this same movie uh and what are your thoughts on kind of the new suit look uh as well as the new bike and do you guys think this is going to be the last hurrah for batfleck or do you think this is a sign of uh brighter days ahead as brandon's life uh, turns out when i say the word bright yeah i <laughs> i just don't get it anymore um i i think it it might just be the end like the last hurrah but like Especially with like everything else going on with the DCU, but like, um, I don't know. Michael Keaton, I didn't watch many, I think I only watched one of his. Uh, it's just all, all of them were all during like my time period, and I, I just watched like one of each of the George Clooney, Val Kilmer, and then Michael Keaton. And mm -hmm. uh, I'll catch it from time to time, but like, so I'm not super excited. I it's what like whatever. Like I said, Ben Affleck looks like Bruce Wayne to me more than anybody else. Val Kilmer did too. Yeah. Like I will say, Val Kilmer at least made a yeah. believable Bruce Wayne. But oh like, yeah, he did. Know. Yeah, I yeah. think like one of the peak like Bruce Waynes is like Michael Keaton with the glasses. With I the think he neck? looks with the turtleneck. And then I also said I said this a while ago. I think when maybe we, Sean when like I think one of our first episodes we were ranking our bat our favorite Batman. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember this. Uh. Ben Affleck with the beard playing Bruce Wayne. I thought that was fantastic. Don't know why he shaved. Thought that was a stupid idea. Shaves right in the movie, right in front of Wonder Woman. Don't know why you're shaving. Keep the beard. Um, now he's got J-Lo back in his life. Uh, he seems to be feeling good. You know, I'm not going to lie. When Anna, when Anna Darmus left, I thought it might go downhill again. You know, Same. I thought uh, it was over. Because she, she was with him through, like, I, I think she was with him, like, through his whole, like, kind of recovery and yeah. you know um and then obviously she left and we had casey thrown out the, the cardboard cut out of her <laughs> in front of his house um <laughs> and then a rod and j-lo call off their engagement i think they're engaged and mm -hmm. what do you know ben affleck's back with j-lo which i'll be honest completely honest i had no idea that this was a relationship back in the day uh really yeah, I didn't know. And then Daniel was like, haven't you seen the music video when he's on the yacht? And he's like, I was like, no, I've never. And I watched it. I was like, oh, OK. Um, but him as Batman, uh, I'm excited to see where this goes. I think this might be. I think this is I think he's done after this. I, 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 I he did look he looked like he was having fun in the Snyder cut. But Zack Snyder is done with the DC um, for now, at least. Um, so I, I, I think this is his last hurrah as far as Michael Keaton goes, obviously there's been talk about him kind of taking out him having a way bigger role in this movie mm -hmm. um, and in the DCU and, going forward too. and DCU. Forward to yeah. As a whole. Yeah. Um, so I think he's here to stay, but as far as Ben Affleck goes, I think this is maybe his last little kind of hurrah. And I don't think he has a huge part in this movie. Yeah. I think he's a little bit more subdued. Mm -hmm. Same. I think, um, I think that there is more of a chance that he will stay on um, now more than ever, just because he seems to be in such a good place. And he seems to be, like you said, you know, having fun and happy to play the character again. Um, I just think there was a lot of stuff going on in his life uh, that made him kind of take a big step back. Uh, but I think now he's got a little bit more stable footing type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's more likely now than than ever before. Um, but I still think this is probably going to be his last one. But I'm leaning more away from, like, the fact that he's going to die. Uh, I think it's going to be more of, like, a, he's going to retire or... Hanging it up. He's gonna, Hanging it up. Yeah, or maybe he's going to, like, get stuck somewhere. 
You know what I mean? Like maybe he gets st- stuck in the future or in an alternate mm-hmm. world or something. Uh, and maybe they can't, maybe they lose him. Like, may, But maybe, like I'm saying, some way to get rid of him, but leave the door open for anything to happen in the future type of thing. Because I think it would mm. be a mistake to just, like, kill him and be like, yep, he's right. done. He can never come back ever. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's like, well, that's kind of limiting, and I don't think anybody's really in the business of limiting their universe when it comes to comic book movies anymore. Mm. Um but yeah, uh, I agree too. I yeah. think he'll have a much smaller role in this movie than Keaton, um, and just yeah. a, a a small role in general. I think. Um, before we leave this topic, Brandon, okay. give, can I have your top three Batman voices? Uh, this can also include the games. Mm-hmm. So um, and Adam West, Arkham Knight, Arkham Asylum, Adam West, top three. Um. It's so backwards. Uh, it's probably it's probably Keaton, then Clooney. Wow. Then this is backwards. The, yeah, <laughs> probably the game. Yeah, I just the game. Yeah, fair. Oh, I no, think no, well deserved top three. Number uh, the cartoon. Kevin Conroy. I mean, the, oh, the, the cartoon. cartoon. Okay. Yeah. Kevin same Conroy. Voice. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The Batman cartoon yeah, yeah. in the game. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just that is number one. I I yeah. Like. Number one. Wait, so that's you said Keaton, then Clooney, then. Well, Conway, I guess it would be right? it would be it would be it'd be the other way around. So it'd be Clooney's third, Keaton second, and then okay, first. I think that's that's a fair list. I I, I, I mean, definitely people have problem with George Clooney probably being up there, but mm-hmm. I I don't even know if I remember I just, what George Clooney. I think like. of I think <laughs> of Bruce Wayne as being someone older. I thought Christian yeah. Bale was a was a little. I really like. Christopher Nolan's movies. I I mean mm-hmm. I don't see any issue with Dark Knight. Yeah. Uh, I mean I liked all three of them. I mean, yeah. So, but I just yeah. it's it's hard to believe that he was Batman, but like it was just such a good movie that it just it's, I overlooked that. Were you a fan as of far the as... uh, the Gray Temples in Dark Knight Rises, indicating that he was an older man? Did that make it better for you? And still didn't buy it. That was all um, they did to age him up in that movie. That was it. Even oh, really? It was supposed, like, it was supposed whole, to be like, like five years later or something. Or no, eight years. Mm. Wasn't it like eight years after the Dark I don't remember. <laughs> I didn't think it was that long, but I can't remember how many years. Um, but I it was like I, four, but oh, when originally, God. when originally ranking them again, over many episodes again, that was like first, second, third episode, wherever we did that. I, I had Christian Bale like top number one Batman. So I don't think I ranked the voice. So if I had to go voices, I think I have to go Kevin Conroy number one. And I th- honest, see, like I, I feel like I rewatched the trill, the Nolan trilogy fairly recently, and I can oh, yeah. see people's like difficulty with Christian Bale, his like gravelly, like mm-hmm. you know, like very just low voice. Um, I do like Ben Affleck's voices modulator thing. I think yeah. that is sick. Um, like when Alfred so maybe goes, I'd. Uh, he's like, what does he say? Alfred goes, funnel fairy, whatever. whatever. <laughs> something he's like saying like <laughs> something about a muffin or something. Uh, um, trying to think. I, Clooney's not in there. I can't even remember what Clooney sounds like. Kilmer, I can't remember what he sounds like. Um, he said, I don't think Adam West. Is, I just never watched an Adam West Batman movie or show at all, TV episode. So I can't put him in there. Just frankly, on I haven't seen it. Um, so for what I've seen, I'd probably have to go like Keaton. No, I'm sorry. This is this is one to three. Uh, Conroy, probably Bale, and then Affleck. So I still I really like Bale's, but I can see why people would be like, "Can you just shut up?" Or like do something else. <laughs> I think I Even, don't remember Ben yeah. Affleck's as much, and I think that's maybe another reason why. But mm-hmm. like, it's just like I just can't. I couldn't stand. Like I said, I couldn't stand Bell Bell's voices. Bell. That's fair. I I totally get it. He probably lost his voice a few times. I have to imagine, right? I um, yeah. what's it called? I would have. I would probably go. Number three is Affleck. Number two, I would say Conroy, and then for me, I would say number one is Bale. I just mm-hmm. like, I like Bale, but I love Kevin Conroy too. Like they're very, very yeah. close for me. Um, mm-hmm. 
but yeah i just love like i, I think i just love like quoting christian bale's voice like mm-hmm. so much like it's just like um so good but yeah it's kevin amazing conroy. too because Conroy like that, is batman though that's like right. just like kevin conroy like speaking like that's really like just yeah. his regular voice yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is crazy uh um so we're talking about black widow and then our top 10 yeah let's get into we it we should so have brandon already... prepare a top 10 star wars <laughs> oh no we gotta, we gotta parse it out man we gotta parse yeah, it we, out. okay okay well i will figure it out another time oh right harry called? potter too um all right so yeah we are, let's uh transition into a full black widow uh spoiler review oh. uh I, yeah. i'd say we'll start off uh non-spoiler then we'll give our rating um and then we'll go full spoiler discussion mm-hmm. it has been uh so let's go first so yeah well why don't we go with the uh, guest of honor first brandon? okay brandon I, what I do you think it's mine i think okay yeah you watched it maybe two hours ago or something like that mm-hmm. so. yeah it was it was probably I, I wrapped it up probably an hour and a half before we started airing. okay so, so the original thing that i took away from it is man oh man did I wish this became a movie before Endgame because of the result of what happens to her in Endgame. It would mm-hmm. have made that whole death a little bit more like meaningful because as right. like, as I was watching Endgame, I kind of felt more connected to now. I mean, I know she's a recurring character throughout all the movies, but I even felt more like connection to, um, uh, Hawkeye, mm-hmm. trying to think. Of, yeah, um, but yeah. So I felt more connection to him because they at least introduced his family in the second one in mm-hmm. Age of Ultron or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And like that, at least got me to like feel like he's an actual person. Natasha was just always like, "Oh, she's an extra person. We don't really know much about her past throughout the mm-hmm. movies." I mean, if you read the comics, you know. But like, I just thought that like this explains so much and like gives you a strong connection. Like I felt very connected to like what her struggles were as well as through like the whole mm-hmm. family aspect of it. I, I thought the the tone of the movie was, was, was really good. I thought, but the biggest takeaway, and I'm going to, I'm going to talk about this in my review. And if it does or does not make my top 10 is that it did not feel like an MCU movie. It felt very, so. yeah, it felt very, like, detached from the MCU with the mm. whole thing of, like, it being its own movie. I guess that's, like, it's because it's a little bit later on and it's after Endgame. Maybe that's why. But, like, I still think, like, the whole tone of the movie was, like, if you were to take that and put that as any character, like, I would believe that as a movie. And I thought it was really, really just, like, that kind of movie that could could write its own thing and not be connected to the MCU and still have the same effect that it did on me. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, Sean, you want to go or you want me to go? Sure. Yeah. 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 I, um, I gotta say, I, I agree with a lot of what you said, but I disagree with some of it too. I really, I, I enjoyed this movie. I didn't expect uh, that I would enjoy it as much as I did. Um, I think, the main place that it falls down and this is not an uncommon criticism is pretty much what most people say is the villains i think we were dealing with like this movie i'll speak more on it you know in a little bit in spoilers but like this movie probably should have come out in phase two for two reasons uh because it's kind of a little too not too little because it's a good it's a good movie but it's a little too late i think for the movie uh and also it's villains reminded me of like phase two villains as well. Like Mm -hmm. pretty one note, pretty, you know, lackluster, um, story and stuff. And I know that like Dracoff's daughter and the red room and stuff, I know we've gotten the hints to it. Like Brandon said, age of Ultron, we got a little glimpse with, you know, Wanda giving her that vision of the red room and stuff. Um, but the, the villains just did not come together for me. Um, and we'll talk more about taskmaster in spoilers. I'm sure. Um, but, but even more than that, the, the obvious villain from the trailer, Ray Winstone, um, just really fell flat. I mean, and Ray Winstone's a really great actor too. Uh, and, and I really just did, didn't really care for what was going on, uh, in regards to the villain, but everything else to me, I think the movie really was fantastic. Um, I think the, the strongest spot in this whole movie 
is the family dynamic between the four main characters um uh, especially obviously the two sisters uh with florence Pugh and uh Strava johansson um but i think that's where this movie truly like uh really just like takes off and is and it's very very good um mm-hmm. yeah that was my initial thought it's so before tj goes i just want to make a, yeah. like a comment about um the whole thing so that is probably the the villains is what you bring up is like mm-hmm. the the kind of like the stale part of the movie um but with the villains i thought that was the only thing that felt like an event MCU. Movie, you know yeah and I'll, and I'll talk about that when i go down my list of mm-hmm. my top movies and like i need to have that feel that it's like connected <laughs> she was my she was my favorite character in that movie mm-hmm. by far yeah but like she the whole and the she had the hardest it, job. She had the hardest job in that movie. It, well, yeah, it was it was a lot of uh, it was a lot of feeling like Shield, like it was that like you said like Phase Two. That was probably the biggest thing that like connected it to the MCU. Mm-hmm. Other than that, like I said, it just felt like a its own movie, and maybe that is because it came out too late. But mm-hmm. that's it. Mm-hmm. Um. So I agree with what with some of what Brandon said as well as you, Sean. I. Uh, for me, I've said multiple times. I don't know if I've said on the show that Endgame. I when she died, I was like, okay, like I really did not give a shit. Um, yep. So if this movie would have come out before that, I probably would have had a bigger connection. That's like crazy um, to me. I'll just say that right now because yeah, I like I don't agree with. I was like, oh, that's sad. <laughs> we'll talk about it. I don't. Yeah, it's like I I don't know. Um, and again, she's always kind of been a background. Like she, like I would say she co-starred Winter Soldier, right? Yeah, you could say that for okay sure. yeah but again that's not her own movie it's not her own movie you know well, yeah, she doesn't it, have her own yeah. solo you know um i agree the villains were i i liked ray Wynn. i thought he was a good villain um taskmaster not great um uh and the whole like oh they turned to it it should be a man wait, 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 I, wait, 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 like wait, wait. it doesn't matter okay yeah oh yeah. sorry 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 um i thought that was that like people were like, oh, it you know it should be this certain gender. Who cares? It doesn't matter, really. It, it really doesn't. Um, and apparently they met like the comic. They're like, oh my god, how could you take this character from the comics and like fuck them up so badly? I have never read the comics, so apparently he's like super sick in the comics. I don't actually know that to be if that's true or not. Um, the only other exposure to Taskmaster I have is in the Avengers video game, and even that, I was it's like this. Man. Okay. And you know, and Spider Man, right, right, right. Yeah, that's um, what I remembered. Forgot about that. Um, I thought hands down, the best parts of the movie were David Harbour and Florence Pugh. Hands down, like Florence yeah. Pugh had all the funny lines, all the emotion that she put into her. I thought like everything, like her at the table when she's like, "It was real to me," and you know, blah blah. blah. I thought that was great. And it's David Harbour. It's just like he was. I just, every second of him, I loved him. I was like, this is, you know, let's forget about Hellboy and what he did. You know, that wasn't his fault. Let's focus on him and Black Widow because he's fantastic yeah. in those. Um, I'm also like, sometimes I'm like, where did David Harbour even come from? Because like, I feel like recently he's just been <laughs> in everything. Like he was in No Sudden Move mm-hmm. and now he's in this and like, you know, um, he was in Hellboy, obviously. But like that Stranger Things was the first time I ever, you know, knew who he was. But that was, like, um, I think, his like breakout role. Was yeah. Stranger Things. Um, Right. And Rachel Weiss I thought was great as well. Um but yeah, I I I thought it was very I thought it was good, but I just wished it came out, you know, four or five years ago. Mm-hmm. And if not maybe longer. they did something or not if not longer. Cause then I you know, because then I just care this made me care a little bit more for that character and now I, she's not I, I there anymore. Think, so. I genuinely <laughs> think this movie this movie just would have worked so much better. Mm-hmm. And I know that it's not it's not kevin feige or disney's fault uh that it didn't come out sooner it's you know well I, okay so I, what I, 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 get, can wait. i quick say on that like yeah i've heard that like there was this producer at marvel that was like, like, like Perlman, not yeah. yeah that he was like no women-led films yeah and that was maybe a part of a reason that this was yeah. out so late yeah um so that's like whole true like i never heard of this guy so i yeah you know, he's that was like, like that's what i was like trying to say like i, I think he passed get... away right no, I believe. he's still he's still alive. Oh, he just yeah. left. He's, okay. he's still out there. He's yeah. Oh, okay. Um but he's like a big like, uh, like he's, he's yeah. No, really. Um 
he's like uh, very good friends with uh, the former president of the United States. Um, he's, oh. uh, he's very, um, like one of the most famous, uh, and another thing about him, like I said, Voldemort, like he very famously does not, like he like pays millions of dollars to keep his picture out of the press. Like he does not like to be publicly oh, wow. seen. I did not know that stuff. But there's this one really scary picture of him and Trump that's like like the most sinister looking like picture in the world. <laughs> like it's very like it's like through, like, Google a, this. It's, like through like a window and it's like there's like smoke in the room and stuff. It's like what the weird. fuck? Um, but, but anyways, um, Mr. Sunday Movies does a great bit whenever he talks about Ike Perlmutter. He puts that on and it just like plays ominous music and he goes, I don't even know what yeah. how it's happening. It's just playing the music by itself. I don't like <laughs> it's so funny, but um. It's very, very ominous. Just look up like Ike Perlmutter and Trump picture or something. But um, <laughs> it's very terrifying. Um, oh my gosh. But yeah, he like famously was like at a. Screen. Oh, what the fuck is that? <laughs> he was very famous. That looks like that looks like an Ocarina of Time when you're in Zelda's <laughs> class and you're looking through the, the glass and Ganondorf turns his head at you and starts <laughs> looking at you. That's what that looks like. Yeah, it's very scary. Um, But he very famously like was it like a press screening and he was like why are people getting two drinks not just one drink or like or like why are they getting a free popcorn like so yeah. he's very money tight very crazy and yeah he very famously said you know no he didn't say cuz you can't he would be immediately fired I, yeah, I don't want to say like, like he, he said, said like no oh no women, women let move you know yeah, sorry but what I he apologize. said was no 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 what he he basically said that but he didn't say exactly that what he said yeah. was he said a, p- a people of color led comic book movie yeah and a woman led comic book movie will not sell toys that and uh, that was the reason he okay. said that was how he basically did it he was like he was like no i'm not approving these movies because they won't sell toys like that like he yeah. like was like they won't make any money that kind of thing like i'm not racist but they just won't make money and it's like <laughs> leaves the company immediate next year black panther makes like a billion dollars and billion dollars yeah. and stuff like yeah. uh, nominated for best picture but it's like um but yeah that's absolutely true the whole reason that this movie okay. didn't get made sooner is 100 percent because of ike perlmutter because it, okay. it, there's no question it would have gotten made sooner and then i genuinely think the only reason that captain marvel got made before this was just the the way that they had the story mapped out i think it was like okay, Captain Marvel has to be here and then goes there. Also, Scarlett Johansson was pregnant right after Civil War, so she didn't, she right. wasn't really able to, you know, go right into the next movie. And as is, before her kid even turned one years old, she was already back on set mm-hmm. filming Infinity War. So it was like, there, it was like Perlmutter because if he wasn't there, they could have fit it into the schedule. But it was like, they, they couldn't throw it into production real quick too. Like, that was a big issue. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, it was a couple of those reasons, but but I think straight after Civil War would have just been the exactly when it takes place would have been uh, the best place for this. So would knowing this, in your say down the line, you kids ask you, or if you have kids, whatever, when you're showing them the MCU, do you put this with Phase Two? No, I put this right word i i watch in order i get yep. the people that go oh chronological or like like do you mean like chronologically or you just slot it in anywhere phase two and you just kind of i go. just slot it in at the end of phase oh two. yeah no i i would just leave it where it is hmm. sean i think i would just watch it well it's difficult because it's like there's so three movies take place all like at the same time it's uh hmm. homecoming Black Panther and this all take place like at the exact same time, like mm-hmm. days after Civil War. Um, I don't watch those movies out of order, but also those movies are, they're not quite in order, but they're like in order enough. But this is like belongs with those two, but is like mm-hmm. way out there. So I don't know if I was doing a whole binge. I want to say I would probably, honestly, knowing me, I would probably watch it in chronological. Like I would probably watch this after I watched Black Panther. Like I would, I would watch Black Panther, then I would watch this, then like Infinity War. You right. I mean? Like I would do it like that probably. Um, yeah. 
that's probably what i would do because i i think the first time you watch like a franchise or something you should watch it in release order like with star wars and stuff i think you should watch that in release order but then after that yeah i learned the hard thing about that yeah once you know everything that happens in the movies might as well just watch it in chronological order. like you know what mm-hmm. i mean that way you could just experience the story in a different way uh and also it just narratively you get to watch the whole narrative flow you know until the, there stops being a narrative flow after you know the first six movies but uh you know you get to watch the narrative flow at least up until that point um mm-hmm. but yeah so i would probably now that i've already seen it i would probably watch it in chronological order but yeah but it's yeah. difficult because it's like it it's set all the way back you know 2016 but it came out literally in five years after like it's like it's a big mm-hmm. gap like it's a very yeah. big gap like like black panther was set in 2016 but that came out in you know february 2018. of 2018 it's but it's like that's only two years this is five years this is over five years since civil mm-hmm. war um but yeah so yeah let's give our right, brandon what's your star rating out of five for the movie and then we'll go into full spoiler discussion uh i'm gonna give it a four out of five and that's with like um like i said four out of five is that bridge where it's rewatchable i can rewatch it i will definitely rewatch it um four and a half would have to be like i only find like one or two things wrong with it five i very hesitant like i'm one of those teachers very hesitant to give a movie a five star rating ever because like Mm -hmm. it needs to be like I can watch that Absolutely movie whatever perfect. I want. Yeah. I I can turn it on if I'm like, oh, let's watch have a movie night. Oh, you guys want to yeah. come over? You haven't seen this movie? I'm definitely showing you this movie because it's mm-hmm. one of my favorites of all time. So like it's it, and it doesn't have to be produced great or whatever. It's just like there's something about it that it makes it in the top movies. But I I did really thoroughly enjoy this movie. Um, I thought it was great. The only issues I had, like I said, were timing of it, which is again not their fault, but. It's a it's a domino effect of that, and then um, just villains. I, I well, I actually that's that's the part that I'll talk about. But like, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I, I actually like. The villains, I sent some like, some I, dis- disagreements. <laughs> yeah, so th- what well, we can talk about that, but like yeah. the 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 ending fight scene, I think is the actual ending fight scene, or just the the third act kind of that whole sequence. Are you talking about? I'll say the second half of the third act, like even that, like ending okay. fight scene, like yeah. the whole, the, like I won't get into it, but like it's, it's once when the it really starts drops. to pick up. Yeah, yeah, it's like when it really starts to pick <laughs> up. It's not like yeah, the initiation. It's when like something mm-hmm. happens that we'll talk about that turns it into like dynamic the nth degree. Dynamic. Yeah, it yeah. goes. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah. I would say I'll give out of five. I would say I give it like five point five. 5.5? Give it a 4, no, bro. No, I'm just kidding. I gave it a 4. Yeah, yeah. I, I also it, gave I it a 4. four. Yeah, 4 5. Yeah. Um, so pretty cross. Okay, so... Yeah. And it's yeah. funny because we all have disagreements on it, but we all gave it the same score. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think so it's a good MCU movie. I just don't think spoilers. it's like, you know. Um, well, I actually, I have a, qu- a question for you guys. Like, did you like the whole... Like when she went to go hit him, did you like the whole like smell thing, or did you think that was like too out there? Too out there. I'm glad okay. you brought that up. That are we are we spoiling now? Yep, oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Spoiler yeah. spoiler yeah. badge okay. on the screen. Okay, so the whole smell thing I did not like. That would that okay. really just because the fact that she then turns and uses that like sever the nerve, the whole mm-hmm. that line like. Her face, and I know she's like a trained spy or whatever, but like her face is so believable when she first finds it out that like yeah. I'm trying so hard to shoot you, I'm trying so hard to like stab you, and I can't. Yeah, it's like so believable, and then she's just like, yeah. "Oh, we already talked about it. I should just like sever. The- I already know about your like pheromone thing." But like he like tells her as like a reveal. That's a good point. And, like it's it, it just like it just like. So yeah. One of those things like always like irks me the wrong way, and I always hold on to that, in uh, in a movie. But like, mm-hmm. I mean, that's the only issue I had with the story of her and him and everything. I I thought they also could have done the whole 
ending a post credit scene a little bit better and also tie in that whole ending of her leaving but we'll get into that too but yeah um i honestly i it kind of worked for me i i kind of liked it i don't know why i just what, think it was a bit out there the pheromone thing yeah. i just liked that 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 it was like i want to kill you and then like i can't because like that's just something that because he they're tra- these people are trained they're taken as kids and they're conformed into this you know killing machine and it would make sense that there's a few fail safes in there to me at least um i'm not th- again i could see where it's kind of like you know we're here and then that's like all the way and you know mm-hmm. 50 feet away um but i i kind of liked it um it kind of worked for me um john did you like it or were you kind of you were iffy on it yep i had to take my pretzel out um I really, uh, if we're talking the pheromone thing specifically, I did like that because I thought I was like, okay, that's very like James Bond, like out there. Yes, it is. Like very like, uh, no, that's another movie that I did not finish, but I did start the Craig Bonds. I'm like three. Casino Royale, best one out of them. Three. three Actually, Skyfall's good, but I like Um, uh, Casino Royale more. Yeah, Quantum of Solace is, I think, the best one, but it's, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just Quantum kidding. of Solace um, is not good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's it called? Uh, I thought it was very, like, Bond, like, secret agent, like... Yeah. Just, like, schmaltzy over the top, but I was, but I thought it fit. I thought it fit with what they were going for. Um, so, yeah, mm-hmm. if, if your question is, did I like it? I think, yeah, I liked it. Um, but there was a couple moments where it, like, tipped a little too far over yeah. the edge like um when she's like you know sever the nerve and then she smashes her head like yeah and i was like i was like and i get that totally she's she's almost impervious <laughs> to feeling pain like that's her whole yeah. life she's built up pain tolerance and all that i'm not talking about that what i'm talking about is then when she goes <clears throat> oh yeah and it's just cracks back. it back in place and it's like yeah. Yeah, but that doesn't. But you still severed the nerve. Like putting your nose back doesn't mean that you unsevered the nerve. Like she's yeah. still, she's still not going to be able to smell anything. So like, that's what I was now, questioning. I was answer like, this question for me. So now I might be misinterpreting the whole pheromone thing. Mm-hmm. So it is when she smells him, she cannot hurt him. Correct? Is that am I correct in saying that? Yeah, yeah when I she think gets that's like, like the up premise. To mm-hmm. So couldn't she just technically either have a nose plug or just stand twenty feet away and shoot him? I think pheromones work different. It's just like the whole like thing. I think because you, I mean, you you can experience like you can like taste smells, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like yeah. I think it yeah, probably has on some strong ass cologne or yeah. some shit. And Melania, I think she <laughs> says in biologically the movie that you can't. Yeah, okay. yeah like, some like biological thing, which is fine. Like, yeah. th- like I said, the prop. I don't really have a problem with the whole. She can't hurt him because of the pheromone thing. I had the problem mm. with. She already knew about it. And mm. she had that strong reaction, and then mm-hmm. it, it, yeah. like, it was, you're kind of like, who are you acting thing. for? Yeah, because I I right. thought you like, mm-hmm. said like what you said, TJ, with the whole like it really shows the kind of lengths that he went to for the fail right. to like make sure, and like it, it it does add to the tone of like seriousness of like these girls have been completely destroyed from the beginning mm-hmm. of their lives mm-hmm. and like ripped apart to the point where like they can't even control a lot of the stuff, yeah. which is a part mm-hmm. of the tone of the movie that I really did enjoy. It's like you always, and that's why I think I connected with her character so much is that like, she really had a rough life. And then like you get a, you get to experience her mm-hmm. sister, which you could argue is had a harder life. And then like her emotions with the whole family thing, like we brought up the whole dinner scene where they're at uh, their their mom's house, and that that's not thing. even. But like, I thought yeah. it added to severity, so so it wasn't terrible. I just didn't like. I said like the whole knowing about it shock mm-hmm. factor. Um, was I the only one here that didn't know they weren't actually blood related? <laughs> so I didn't know that. <laughs> that. <laughs> right now. Like at what point? In the no, movie? I knew it. Like I didn't know while, like until like a certain point in the movie, I was like, "Oh fuck, they're not." Like probably the beginning, literally, like yeah. you know. But I was like, "Oh, I didn't." Until they I didn't spoil know that they it in the together. movie. Yeah. Yeah, until they spoil it in the movie where they're like, "Oh, we're not real." Like mm-hmm. yeah, when she talks about her mom leaving her in the garage and they're at, they're right, at like, right. outside the garage and like 
they like are drinking together and she's talking about her vest or whatever or no that was she's talking about the vest mm. in the car it was she's talking at that point elaine is like talking about her fake family like how yeah, nat yeah. lives like in the west with like her mm-hmm. husband or whatever yeah yeah and i was like oh fuck i didn't mm-hmm. totally thought they were all Sorry, family what was the thing but... you just asked? oh yeah yeah <laughs> i thought going into it i was like because in the tra- they say in the trailer the whole thing of like we weren't really a family and then the whole like it was real to me like that was in the trailer. Oh, I must miss that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, so they're not a real family. But then in the first scene, I was like, oh, I, I guess they yeah. are a real family. I was like, because <laughs> yes, it was like everybody was, and I was like, why is everybody like they're all like having these perfect American accents and stuff? And I was like, yeah. And of course, the movie's like, yeah, they're all spies. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, but then I was like, well, even in private, they were talking in there, and I was like. Oh yeah, because they're all spy. Like they're not gonna break mm-hmm. for anything. They didn't. He didn't even stop talking. Like David Harbor, didn't even stop talking in an American accent until like a minute into him talking to Drakov when they get to Cuba. Right. Like he kept it that yeah. entire time. Like all of them did. Um, yeah. But yeah. I I um. I when I saw that in the trailer of like, oh the, the family's like it wasn't real and. It, was real mm-hmm. and everything like that like i just think that was like because they were torn apart from each other like i thought it was going to yeah. be like they were separated right. early on and yeah it's like mm-hmm. you weren't even really my mother because they let them take me or something like yeah. that or it was going to be something along those lines but then like like i said you find out towards the middle of the movie that like they're not really blood related and they're all just like whatever which is which is even like harder because you really feel for the girl who like didn't even know and like when when natasha first defends her in cuba and like talking about not touching her and she like oh yeah steals a gun and like it's, she's like i'll kill she's, every one of she's you she's <laughs> only six yeah yeah and like that's the point where like oh man she's already gone through this mm-hmm. and like, yeah, she right. knows what's happening alexi says to her she, when nat's like she's only six alexi's like you were even younger and it's yeah. like jesus right, yeah. christ like fuck. yeah that's what i was like oh <laughs> shit and yeah, that's like, life is pretty fucked up yeah yeah like, you're like well i like you're at first you're like well at least she got these like 11 normal years in um in, in ohio and then it's like oh no they were only there for three years like mm-hmm. from until the age of seven like nat was uh, she was still she in was russia like spy. yeah exactly yeah like at the age of eight or, uh, or eight or seven or whatever yeah, yeah like this oh my gosh yep crazy Just um crazy. so what are some other yeah. uh gripes or things you guys want to talk about with the movie um, Should we talk about I, Taskmaster, or do you want to save it? Yeah, yeah, we could talk about Taskmaster. So I, uh, so obviously we see like the whole like kind of blow, literally blowing up a fucking building mm-hmm. to yeah, kill yeah. Drake off. Finally, find and out, then find out what uh, Budapest is. Budapest, yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, then the reveal kind of at the end. You probably could have guessed it beforehand. Did you just that figure that was. out? Did you just? Did, did you just that's what they said it. Yeah. yeah. I forgot that's what he says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, I'll um, say in the first Avengers movie, Clint was completely right. They definitely remember it very differently because I don't know how you compare what that was blowing up a building to an alien invasion in New York. But like when Nat's like, this reminds me of Budapest. And he's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, yeah. what is like, you and I remember Budapest very differently. And then you get little, uh, in that scene, you get the little uh, Jeremy Renner cameo. Little voice yep. cameo on his on his Google Pixel. Hey. All right, sorry. I um, you, yeah. I just, but I, um, I completely forgot. Yeah. Yeah, you probably could have guessed that she was his daughter was Taskmaster, um, beforehand. I thought that was a little like I thought Did it was a little creepy. Just like she was like, I honestly I could not tell you if I remember or not. I I I was like, oh okay, that's like almost immediately. Yeah. I was like, well, um, that's the only person that it could be. Because <laughs> I was like, it's not the um, delivery boy, right? Um, but I thought I was like, I it almost like when it revealed her face, I was like, it kind of looks like Ryan Reynolds is dead. He's Deadpool, or what is he in X Men? Deadpool in like yeah. one of the X Men in the Wolverine movie, right? Yeah, it's Deadpool. Yeah, Deadpool. He's Deadpool. He's Deadpool. Deadpool. Yeah, yeah, that's what it kind of felt like to me, where he's like she's like weird kind of like that i just Mm -hmm. didn't really like i mean i get that he's like this like ruthless like you know has his his whole program but i just kind of didn't like i don't know i just didn't really like how she was kind of set up as like this sort of puppet yeah basically literally um and then the whole kind of uploading 
I don't know. I I much I th- I would much rather. I don't know if this is how it works in the comics. It probably doesn't. But like have Taskmaster kind of get to learn as they're fighting their fighting style instead of having it uploaded into your freaking head. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like as you know, maybe maybe Black Widow catches him with a catches him her with a punch. And they go, okay, that's that how they how normal, punch. How it normally works. Okay, I would much rather have that than well, having bold. it uploaded in I your should say brain. It's bold. He, he does <laughs> watch it's like footage of everybody. Like, yeah, I think okay. it's the other yeah. way. Yeah. I think I think I would rather have it the, the way it is and watching. Mm-hmm. And really? How okay. she, like, yeah. It, it's just like because I think it's. I'm trying to think of like what it reminded me of, but like it, it, they learn everything, and then it's mm-hmm. you can't really do anything mm-hmm. to stop them until you do another like type of move set or whatever you're doing so like and it felt that way i thought like the the callbacks to like black panther when he's fight when she's fighting uh uh alexi yeah, yeah she does that and then the whole captain america it felt very captain america fighting style with oh, yeah, the, with shield the shield and everything the shield with, like, kick and too, even like the punching yeah yeah and like even like the punching like it felt very captain america style to me which is which is great because i think that like if you were looking at how someone physically fights i mean you don't have like iron man suit or whatever like that's when you're going to who you should fight like it's probably captain america or black widow mm-hmm. so i guess that makes sense but like i i don't like that it was his daughter and that's only because it, it's just like that whole budapest thing is like didn't mean anything really right they're both still alive <laughs> and i thought <laughs> I think the That's whole like true. apology apologizing to her was like a big right. thing, but like I thought it was even harder to like grasp that like she killed a little girl and like that's how much she hated this guy. Mm-hmm. Like it, it kind of like switched it to then she's mm-hmm. sympathetic towards the girl. Not even killed she, like, feels... a little girl, but used the little girl right. as the delivery mechanism of like the bomb. Like that, yeah. like not only like not only like she was in the building, like she put the bomb in her backpack, which also. How is she alive? How did she live through if it was There's, on yeah. her back? <laughs> fucking dead. It, was attached, <laughs> it was attached to her and it leveled the building. Yeah. Question. So it's, questionable. <laughs> it's it's if like you said, and when Barton or Hawkeye or whatever whoever you want to call him but like mm-hmm. it, it, when he brings it up that like we we remember budapest differently like mm-hmm. maybe she just doesn't remember it right but like i i mean that would be really next level thinking but like right yeah, i just i didn't really go for that i thought i thought like you said i thought it was a delivery guy i thought it was a guy who kept on dropping off everything and i only thought that because uh, originally obviously when taskmaster first appears it is the fight when he blows up the car mm-hmm. right she blows up the car and it's like right after like the power goes out so i thought like that was done on purpose and then it's like right you're in a car then i know where i could see that yeah and so like i thought like that's what i was putting together in my head so like mm-hmm. it was my mindset until right when romanoff or natasha or whatever she asks him like did you feel anything when i killed your daughter i was like he's gonna bring her back and I like zoom yeah. contact master. I'm just like, oh my this god, is here shit. we go. Yeah, here <laughs> we go. Like, god, you can't kill off anybody, and unless it's, it says, but like, I thought, I thought the whole so, like, the movie, like, it felt like people were dying and like they mm-hmm. weren't. And so, yeah. like, I thought, like, yeah. the sacrifice of Elena, I, I was like, man, that's great. Like, that sucks. Like it's hard for it's gonna be hard for me to rewatch the movie because like I, I felt so attached to her and she's gonna sacrifice herself and like that would make sense because she's not in any other MCU movies. So like it kind of gets rid of her off to the side and then but like she lives, did so it's just like we just Did you like going. the did you like the face switcheroo? Where she's like, No, I kind I like that. I do I I don't like a lot of little things in this movie, but like as a whole, yeah. I thought it worked really well. Okay. Like the whole what switcheroo did you not like thing. About the switcheroo? I just think that like, I get the whole thing when it was like, maybe because of what I was perceiving to be real, I thought fit the mold better. Right. Like okay. Turning on them 
felt yeah. like that, like that really sucks. Like that she mm-hmm. still she got that emotional moment with her mom, but her mom still turned on her. Right. Like yeah. it's still I angry. believe that too. When she yeah, did that, know, I was like oh, I have a question. I thought <laughs> the way that I read that was that the way I read it was that she did turn on, like that she did call them and was like, she did. Then she's like apologetic but then she about like, it. Oh around. yeah. 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 Like she did. Yeah. Okay. Them in she still. did. <laughs> yeah. She had that, like, one emotional moment. And she's like, sorry, they'll be here within a minute. Yeah. Like, like I'm, she I'm was gonna like, give you that she, up, yeah. Like but I'm she still going to take she care was of being you. Her like cold ass self. Like, Oh, these people are here, but I still called them. But then she's like, Oh fuck. Like they like pull at her heartstrings and it's like, Bro, and she's yeah. like, "Oh shit!" Like, I fucking called them. Like, that's my bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, she's like, yeah. she's like that. She's like, "Listen, I'll own up. That one's on mm-hmm. me. That one's on me." You know what I mean? But then but, like, it's like my control thing when they showed up, and I'm like, yeah. "All right, I guess she really did just like, she's gonna be the one that goes back." And I thought that just like fit by. Mm-hmm. So I guess again, I don't really have a problem with switcheroo. Just like the pheromone thing, it was just, I I preferred the other way. I thought it was yeah. it would have been better yeah. the other way, but like um, it yeah. works. I, I really, I really think like be. the next thing, I, maybe like the last thing, because then we have to get top ten MCU, and we've been going for a while. I feel like at this point, um, it's okay. We're not. It, it's like an hour. And I mean, we're not at a time crunch or anything. Yeah. I don't think. But um, what did you think of the post credit? And did, okay, so I've heard a lot of people like saying like they like undercut her kind of post credit scene. Like, why couldn't it just be this? You know loving tribute to kind of what tony got you know we're all at a funeral here we're all gathering around you know this is proof tony stark has a heart you know and we're in you know we're at florence pew she's looking at her grave and we just hear julia we drive a sniffling in the background like like and, and it just kind of un, it just pulled the rug out of everything and it was almost like kind of like okay next you know um it didn't really allow for like the emotion like i feel like tony's funeral kind of had so did you do you think that was kind of you're like come on like just can we give her like five minutes please (laughs) to to me i hate to even say it but it's like yeah if if you're expecting that i think you're watching the wrong universe to be totally honest i mean that's not what i'm saying i was expecting but i've just seen people like yeah Yeah, i just mean people in general like yeah the mcu especially in a post-credit scene they don't it's always setting up the next thing it's 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 yeah it's kind of weird to say it because it's like they don't do just like an emotional post-credit scene and then that's it you know what i mean they do Mm -hmm. either an emotional post-credit scene that then sets up something or they just do a joke you know what i mean like it's Mm -hmm. one of those two it's never gonna be just like like imagine if that's just how the movie like like i know that everybody says like that's what they want like like oh they undercut the moment but it's like Imagine how shitty you would feel going out of the movie if and the just last thing that like, happened, if it was yeah. just Yelena crying at her sister's grave, does the whistle, and then, like, drives away. And you're like, well, fuck, Jesus Christ. Like, like, yeah. and I know that, like, some people want that. Some people want, like, the su- give me the super emotional, like, thing about Nat. Like, let me feel, let me see what this character's feeling type thing. But it's like, yeah. I think it's I mean, they probably should have done an endgame, if I'm being honest, but. Yeah. I think that yeah, hit harder. Too. The, the end scene hit harder than her death in Endgame. Like I like felt for Yelena more than I felt for yeah. Hawkeye. Yeah, and people were like, I saw some people, that, and I don't know if you guys agree with this or not, but I saw some people that were like, uh, they were like, oh, they should have you know put this movie out, like they should have put the movie out with the post credit scene before Endgame, because then it's like you you hear her say like the man responsible for killing your sister, and it's like. Yeah, but then you give away, like, everything about Endgame. Like, and people were like, imagine that cliffhanger. And it's like, no, I don't want to imagine. Like- hey, is that your monitor? <laughs> it just keeps, so it just keeps, like, disconnecting. It's, uh, oh, that's, that's weird. Those okay, yeah. it's probably your cable yeah, or something. I have to, uh, oh, I'm going to go figure this out. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, but, what's but uh, yeah. what was the other thing? Uh, oh, yeah, like, how the fuck... Does Julia Reese Drivers know what happened? How the fuck does she, she know? Does. I, I think that's the point. Is that she? Well, then how does? Why would she say? Oh, look who killed your like, look who killed your sister. Well, because I think she's. You know? just, I think she's trying to manipulate her into killing Hawkeye for some other reason. Because nobody knows what right. happened on right. that planet. You know what I mean? Like nobody knows how she died or what or 
that he killed her. Or you know what I mean? Like, I mean, yeah. I don't I know Red if maybe. Skull yeah, but I don't think Red Skull and and Elaine have been in contact. <laughs> I'd agree well, no, with that. It's Dreyfus. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, I don't. I don't think Red Skull's like. I don't think he would care either. I think he would just be like. Yeah. Like finally, I fucking peaced out. Yeah. Um... And also, if anything, the Red Skull from our universe wouldn't know because they went to a different universe as Red Skull when they time traveled. Right. You know what I mean? So the the Red Skull in the main timeline would right. only know that in like five years, Gamora or five mm -hmm. years ago, Gamora gets tossed down there. Mm -hmm. I think there's still a lot of questions with how that whole thing works. Like, is, oh, he, yeah. fr right. is he freed? Is he bound there regardless of the stone? Like that kind of thing. Like, Right. Um, but yeah, I think it's more just like, you know, she knows this will really get her like amped up to like go and like kill Clint. Like, you know, a chance to get revenge for the man who, you know, is responsible for your sister's death. It's like in no way whatsoever is he responsible for her sister's death. And let alone that, yeah. in no way would Val be able to even know that. <laughs> like, you know what uh. I mean? Like. It's not like the Avengers, you know, released like the minutes of the day, like with uh, everything that happened in Endgame to the press or something. <clears throat> yeah, so I had not watched Falcon and Winter Soldier before this, obviously, as what mm -hmm. I said before. Um, so I did not know she was a character and I had to look up like who she was. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so one thing I want to talk about it. It is now seeming like more people are in the MCU than those who are not who have made guest appearances or yeah. have right. a character. I mean, whatever. So there's that. And we can talk about how uh, we were talking about Michael Keaton earlier. And I was like, he's also in MCU because he's the vulture, but like, Oh yeah. Right. I like <laughs> forgot about that for like so, two seconds. He is <laughs> also uh, in the Tyrese Gibson film Morbius. That's there true. we go. All <laughs> comes back around. It all comes back around. <laughs> yeah. Brad Tyrese is leading that film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I wanted to talk about, and I touched on this, that I wanted to get into this, but, like, they kind of leave out, I thought they were going to connect her, like, m her real mother, and I thought that was going to be the ending of the movie, like, the blossom tree, he even, like, describes the thing, so I was like, oh, that's definitely, like, what's going to be, like, towards the end, she's going to go finally see her mother's, like, gravestone or whatever, right. real mother's, never happens, and then, like, that, like I said, like, that, that end credit scene was just, like, that was hard to watch as mm -hmm. like a fan of the movies and then like just finding it hard to like believe that. And that's when I like really felt like, yeah, this should have definitely happened before like end game. And I would have felt that way towards that. Cause like, man, but I guess you wouldn't even get like, you would only get like Hawkeye's reaction to the death rather than mm -hmm. Elena's, which I think is a lot more powerful because of what she had been through and the whole dinner scene. And, that dinner scene, man, like when she freaks out and like saying it's real, like that. I don't know. That was something like really powerful that stuck. Yeah. That's why I thought the whole tone of the movie with being like family is not mm -hmm. always blood related and yeah, just trying to be together. And that's why I really enjoyed the movie. But yeah, yeah. Florence Pugh Absolutely. is just such a fucking good actress. Like, what's her name? Yeah, that too. Florence Pugh. Oh, yeah. Um. I think okay. So, do do you have anything with that, Sean? I want to touch on like one last thing for myself. Yeah, I was just gonna say. I don't know if this is what you're gonna touch on. I was just gonna say. Do you guys think in any capacity Scarlett Johansson will come back? Uh, I hope so. Now, you do. Wait, I hope so. Yeah, I you would hope really hope okay. so. I hope she'd I think... come back, but I don't know what she'd come back like. It'd perhaps be think? a prequel thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, well, I'm saying, do you think somehow she's doing the, undo the death? She's doing the voice for What If, isn't she? Okay, well, there's one have thing. to find some way to bring her back. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you like can't kill off main characters, and like I know the MCU's had like really bad like criticism with not being like death doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah like yeah, it's it's a lot of people just like going back and like yeah, Tony Stark is really big, but like, well, do you guys think know. at any point that Tony might come back? I, I'm with. I think I'm, I'm on the. Okay with, go ahead. I think Robert Downey Jr. is personally like. I think he's kind of moved past it. In my opinion, he'll always be Iron Man. Like I don't think anybody will ever be able to. 
you know, even like 50 years from now, if the MCU like is rebooted or something mm-hmm. like that, I don't know. Like if so they cast another Iron Man, like I just don't think it'll There's be the same. Two, two um, men that can do the job, and that's Tom Cruise or Walt Disney. That's it. Nice. Um, but I know Sean, you've said you've said before that he will he could return as like an AI or something like that. Mm-hmm. Which honestly, yeah. I could get on that that's bandwagon, which I comics, think. Yeah. Right, I think that could. I think he would be down for that. Maybe he doesn't have a lot of screen time, or it's just a VO, VO yeah. work, voiceover. Um, so maybe he does that, but I don't think he'll ever be like Tony Stark, like proper, like yeah. flesh and blood, you know, everything like that. I have more closure with his death. I think right. The whole, yeah. I think the the importance of what he did, right, kind of closed his death rather than Natasha. Yeah, loop, I'd agree with that too. It's right. Closed right. it perfectly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think I think they did that really well. I mean, his arc is kind of complete. Yeah, obviously arc, it really I suck. But yeah, I I think it really sucks that he passed. But like, mm-hmm. it, it was important for the movie, and I don't think it's yeah. the same way with Natasha. And I thought mm-hmm. that like right. putting this out there is going to be huge. Yeah. And I think I think, I mean, me personally, I enjoyed it way more than Captain Marvel. So like, if we need to talk about a female lead like Marvel movie. Yeah, that, like if I were to have a daughter and I'm like, I I'll want to bring you... Chris Wass on for that conversation with Brandon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is a big Captain Marvel fan? No, oh. he did not like that movie. <laughs> oh, okay. right. It's not terrible. I, I did like it, but like it's, yeah. it's not Black Widow. So like if I were to show like, hey, if you want to be like a superhero, like mm-hmm. I don't care. I'm not going to pick genders, but like if you were to try to be like a representation in superheroes it's definitely mm-hmm. black widow and like i, I gotcha. think that it's important that like do you think it's better than wonder woman yeah which both, one both wonder woman mm-hmm. interesting i i, haven't I would wonder agree while, so. i would actually agree with that it's I definitely better than the second one so, i don't know about the second. so much trial and tribulation it's a hundred percent better than the second one but i i think it's yeah. i think it's on par if not a little bit better than the first one i think i only say that because i think wonder woman Wonder Woman rivals for best DCEU film. So I, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. So I think she has more of an importance in the DCU rather than Black Widow's importance in the MCU. So like, yeah, sure. But That's like, true. I just think that Black yeah. Widow stands for so much more. It's like family mm-hmm. uh, resilience, turning pain into strength. It's mm-hmm. just like she is mm-hmm. like what I would try to mold mm-hmm. out of a daughter. Yeah. Gotcha. to be your own person and to overcome everything that the world puts in front right. of you and i think that's kind of what her character was like she goes through all that shit and like you only get glimpses of it like you said in age of ultron when you like go back to the red room whatever but like right um last thing i was gonna say yeah this is more of a theory mm-hmm. um is sean you'll be able to shed some light on this because you've read i don't know how, I, I never get a gauge of how many comics you've actually read but every time I wrote your question to you, you seem to have the answer. So whatever. Well, it's a Brooks combination of I read a lot of comics and I watch a lot of stuff that explains stuff. Right. And I read explains up that. Yeah. Of, yeah, I read up histories um, of things and stuff. Yeah. So it's yeah. a mix, but yeah. So we had uh, Ross in the beginning of this movie, and I believe we saw him at the end. Yeah. Did not look very good. He looked very shaky. I've he heard William Hurt does have cancer. He does. I, is that? I think. I don't know. I think I was that's true. That up. Oh, um man, I'm worried now. <laughs> and I think he's 70 something. Yeah. Um now what do we think? I've heard there's theories. This is more obviously when the movie came out, but that there's theories that he's sick, he's going to take the serum, he's going to be Red Hulk. What do we think of that? Does that track uh Sean, do you think? Hmm? What? That he would be Red Hulk? Ross becomes Red Hulk. Uh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. Like, what? do you think he looks sick because he's actually sick oh, in real life? Okay. Or do you think he's just like. Um. Yeah. So. <laughs> sorry, I just looked up and uh, so apparently I think he had cancer. He had terminal cancer oh, that had spread. To sorry, the bone he had terminal cancer in right. 2018. But I don't know if that's still current, or if that's or if he got over that or something. Um, mm. not sure. But um, I hope he's gonna be okay because. He does look terrible, and this is set between Civil War and Infinity War, which he pretty much looked exactly the same in both of those movies. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, 
it leads me to believe it doesn't really make much sense that it's just the character looking like that. So it, I worry that mm -hmm. it is like William Hurt, the actor looking like that. Um, but that being said, also, she they do they don't just not address it. They address it very much. Um, so I've actually been of two minds. So what I think I came down on is I think they are setting up Red Hulk that he's with whatever's happening with him. He's mm -hmm. going, you know, he's always been obsessed with the Super Soldier Serum ever since right. Incredible Hulk in the in 08. I mean, if not before that in, in universe, you know, um, with like his experiments on Bruce with Bruce, you know, and also with uh, Emil Blonsky, you know, Abomination. Um, I, so I think, unfortunately, I think it might be something where it's the actor William Hurt, you know, isn't really looking that good. But I think they're going to try and fold it into the character and that he's going to, you know, be at kind of uh, the end of his rope type of thing and then try to do something to himself mm -hmm. uh, that I think is going to have drastic uh, consequences. Yeah. All I know is that if William Hurt is, you know, sick or has anything like that, you know, I hope he gets well and I hope that he can still keep working because I think mm -hmm. they kind of dragged their feet for a while with that character. And I would hate to see them, you know, if if William or if anything God forbid happened yeah. to him or anything, I think he just kind of disappeared like for a few movies, right? He just kind of like well, for like was, a decade, yeah. He just he, I was gonna he, say he, he didn't show maybe up not a few until, movies, a lot of movies. Yeah, he he, he didn't show up from two thousand eight all the way to two thousand sixteen. Uh, so oh, wow, like, yeah, yeah, so like eight years. Um, but now he's been in a movie every year since then, so mm. we'll, we'll see. But yeah, like I said, you know, God forbid, I hope it's not something with his personal health, but mm. even if it is. I hope it's something that he can keep working and, you know, they can actually go the distance with that character with making the thunderbolts yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, or honestly, hey, I maybe, mean, maybe it's we one have of those where we don't get Red Hulk, but maybe the team gets named the Thunderbolts because maybe something happens to Ross and they're like, you know, yeah. let's name it after him type of thing. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I was going to say we have um, we have Tim Roth and She-Hulk. So and maybe he makes an appearance there and Shang-Chi. Mm -hmm. So maybe he makes appearance uh, in She-Hulk or something like that. It's true. I would, I would uh, not doubt. I would not be surprised if he's in She-Hulk. I would actually place a lot of money yeah. that he's in She-Hulk. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, but yeah. All right. Anything else <laughs> for Black Widow? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Anything else, Brandon? I was trying to think of one more thing that like stuck out to me in that movie and I had it, but I forgot it. Maybe I'll get back to it, but not for right now. Okay. All right. On to our top 10 MCU movies. Uh, mm -hmm. Who wants to go first? This so is for, on. okay. So I don't know about how many of you, this for me is mostly off memory. Um, Sean, I know you've, I don't, have you rewatched all of them recently or no? Hmm. Okay. Brian, I'm assuming you have not. <laughs> so, the only, Within I the mean, last six months. We'll talk about recently. Like, I, I mean, okay. like, last two years, I've watched a lot of them. But, like, right. just like maybe like the yeah. last like year, not so much. But, like, mm -hmm. I mean, I watched a lot of them. I'll catch them on TV from time to time. Like, Guardian okay. of the Galaxy is sometimes on, Iron Man's on. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So, I have a good understanding of which ones I really liked and right. There's some criteria that I have for why, where and why I put some mm -hmm. and why I left some off. Gotcha. Um, okay. So Sean, do we want to do the format was, that we usually do that we steal from the top 10 or <laughs> I was going to do a uh, bottom five for all of us and then one of these. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's so fair. If you want to break down um, what the things are. Okay. So, we're doing. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. So we're gonna in one go. Like I'm gonna go five. You'll do five, and then he'll. Brandon will do five. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we can pick her whatever stuff like that. Um, yeah, and then we can do one a piece after that. Yeah. One a piece, yeah. And with uh, um, punting too, right? With punts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, Brandon, it'll be like, I'll say five, and then you'll be like, if it's a little further down your list, you'll say punt, and then I'll tell you my four. Or I, and then somebody else will say five, I think, right? That's how that was. How well, I mean, that. if we're doing the five through or the 10 through five or 10 through yeah. six, it would be we, what it would be is like if you got to your number nine, Brandon, and you said number nine, Black Panther, 
and I said, you know, oh, that's that's a punt. Like if it's in my mm-hmm. top five. So we're each doing our ten through six at the start. If it's within your ten through six, we'll just talk. Confusing, about it. I know. <laughs> you know I'm be punching all your five or ten oh, through sixes, I think. Yeah. Okay. Because Who wants I go feel first? like a lot of mine are obscure. Uh, I. I uh, can go first. Of honor go I... first. All right, Brandon. Gee, All right, here we six. go. <laughs> Starting at number ten, and you can talk. Okay. You know, talk about you know one of them. Well, say what it is, and then we'll let you know if there's a punt. But yeah. You know. So, Black Widow comes is your in number, at number 10. ten. That's my number ten. Uh, it bumped out. It bumped out Black Panther. Made, I don't think it made our list. <laughs> okay. Um. It, okay. It bumped out Black Panther. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume One is uh, that is a um, that oh, is that's not, that is also my number punt. nine. That is not a punt for me. It's not a punt. Uh, Spider Man Homecoming on my list, is, is number eight. Spider Man Homecoming is number that eight. That is also not a punt. So we wow. can talk about. Okay, it. so maybe. Uh, I well, mean, I, all what, right. Can I say this? Can I say this? Spider Man Homecoming was my ten. It's now my eleven. Okay. So yeah. it was close, but not on yeah, the list. Yeah, I, I, it's, I mean, Black Widow, I talked about it. I really like this tone of the movie. It's four out of five, I think. The, the criteria I used is it has to feel like an Avengers MCU movie, or it has to really connect to, like, I have to feel invested and connected to mm-hmm. it. And so, like, these are the movies that I felt like. And I felt like Black Panther, I didn't like I didn't get emotionally attached to it. It felt as disconnected as a movie. It's great, but like I felt more emotional attachment to black widow. And I think that it was just like done just slightly better. Guardians, guardians of the galaxy. Really fun. Oh, the black widow thing I wanted to touch on was you said that Yelena's character was really funny. Like she was the really funny one. I thought that her timing of comedy was excellent. Like, oh yeah, the poser stuff was great. Yeah. Oh yeah, when she's in and when she's in the helicopter explaining to um, David her Harvey. dad, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lexi about the, the yeah, that yeah. like was I thought that was funny. I yeah. was like, yeah. like, like it what would be like like they yeah. don't really care for him and they just he he wants to keep like trying to act like he's apologizing and then they like <laughs> make it sound so serious and like I thought yeah. it was just like great. Yeah. Um, so, I'll say, too, on talking about Black Widow for your number 10, that's another thing, too, that, not spoilery, but the comedy, I feel, worked really well for me in Black Widow. I, yeah. I think sometimes the MCU misses the mark and they go too much in either direction. I think all, I would say all the comedy in Black Widow really, really worked for me. And mm-hmm. and that surprised me. Yeah. That surprised I me. I thought it was great. Guardians of the Galaxy, really fun ride. Didn't really know about them. Uh, I thought the comedy was great. I think Dave Batista as Drax the Destroyer is great. Um, mm-hmm. The whole, like, the feel of the movie just felt fun. It felt enjoyable. I could go rewatch it. I have rewatched it multiple times. It's an easy movie to, like, pick up and watch. Like I said, like, I catch it on TV and I'm like, yeah, this is great. Like, this is what I want. Um, Homecoming, Spider Man's first solo film. I'm a huge Spider Man person, obviously, from my name. Uh, really enjoyed uh seeing him at a younger age because i think the whole Tobey Maguire thing was a little too old for me like yeah. he was too old i think that it, it first needs to movie be younger. starts I with, with the, the with him graduating high school right so i just i think that it's just like i grew up with all the spider-man comics and um that was like the that cartoon show was like the one that i watched the most was the spider-man one so that <laughs> all right number seven i'm gonna get a lot of hate for this <laughs> okay it's age of ultron Okay, that's okay. Uh, TJ, is that on your list? It is not. No. Okay. No. Nah, see, I didn't think it was going to be. I really, 10. I like Age of Ultron, but it's not top ten for me. Yeah. I Age think Age of Ultron is my just, number ten, so we can talk. It's about a it. good action movie, but to have all of them in it, it needed a more memorable villain, and I thought Ultron didn't do it. The first half of the oh. movie is fantastic. I thought the first half was great. The whole twins thing was great i thought that them being the villains would have been great along with ultron i thought the whole right when they get to uh the whole ugandan scene and uh 
like Scarlet Witch takes over uh, Tony's mind or whatever and all that. I think that's when it starts to turn, and then like the whole end battle is not great, but I still thought the whole like beginning was really wow. good. Wow. I'm surprised you said the I... villain because James Spader is one of the best parts of that movie for me. Right, I re- I like when he comes out originally. And he's like at the right. party, and they're like right, and he's right, just yeah. talking about like humanity and everything. He's I rambling, yeah. I just didn't like. He needed to feel like he was more unbeatable, and I felt like Ultron okay. did not feel that way. Like it okay. felt like mm, this is another. Like I watched Loki in the first one, and even though it wasn't like that big of a character in re- original Thor, like it felt like maybe he's unbeatable. And like I felt like they needed to really work hard to get it done, and it okay. just didn't feel that way with Age of Ultron, which is okay. Uh, and then number six. And well, wait, 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 Sean go. said something yeah. real quick. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, you said number ten. Yeah, it's in your. Yeah. It's so number it's 10 my it's my number ten. So we'll just talk about it right now. Um, for me, I think it's so funny because it's like I mean I don't know I guess just the way that I rate things because it's like to me, I think anything in like the top ten, like I don't I don't, I would say I have very few problems with any of these in the top 10. Like, I think, like, everything that you were saying about, like, the first half of the movie being fantastic, I agree completely. I also think that the second half of that movie is also fantastic. I really, I really like, I actually think it's one of the better end battles. Not in the Avengers movies, because I will say it's the weakest end battle in the Mm -hmm. Avengers movies. Actually, I don't know. I genuinely think it might be on par, for me, with the Battle of New York. Um, just because, and it's not about the, fu- the killing the robots. Obviously that is like, that's the same thing that we yeah. had in the first Avengers movie. It's just the, yeah. take out the, you know, the hive mind Killings. and they all die. Yeah, like I'm it, killing yeah. ads and destiny. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, that, like, and then vision comes along like, Oh, that was all of them. That was yeah. all of them, you know? Um, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> but I will say robots aside, first of all, I don't know. I haven't said it this episode so far, but one of my favorite MCU characters oh, overall, Rhodey, gets some great play in this movie, uh, especially in the end battle, specifically when Vision comes out, when like when Rhodey's like, yeah, War Machine coming at you. And then Vision just goes like, <laughs> and he's like, what? Like, he's just like, like Rhodey's mind, like his whole world just imploded. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but to me, Big part of my top five ro- robots, completely aside um the whole thing of the city that so i love all the dram- the dramatic stuff that like you know is happening with cap and natasha and hawkeye trying to save everybody pietro and um wanda as well obviously uh trying to save everybody all that stuff uh but what really shines for me is the trio of thor vision and tony um, I think the whole thing with like, you know, Thor and Vision trying to take out Ultron and then Tony and Thor trying to work together to find a way to stop this thing that is literally going that if Ultron wins, it's going to, you know, f- flip the thrusters and destroy the Earth. Like I felt like you said, not with the robots, not with actual physical Ultron, but with the plan that Ultron put in place with dropping the city on the Earth. I felt the the tension and on every rewatch I feel the the like holy shit like that I really feel like Tony is really just throwing everything at the wall to try and get this fucking city to stop. You know what I mean? Right. And then and then <clears throat> also also the um I always quote one of my favorite quotes is, you know, Friday his his new digital assistant after Jarvis, you know, became a person when Friday goes, you know, it, it'll vaporize the city and everyone on it like i just love like the way like the but it but you can tell you know she's she's thinking as fast as she can she's a freaking computer and like she's like she's like we could tony's like what if we tried this and she's like no it won't be enough like and then finally you know him thor just like we gotta blow it like we just that's the only thing that we can do and i Mm -hmm. feel like making that decision really influenced Obviously, it influenced the MCU for many years going forward because it it launched the Sokovia Accords and all that, and that we mm. saw again in Black Widow and and multiple multiple projects. We're still seeing them, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, obviously, you know all that stuff. Um, and you know, I, I just really love it. All right, and then yeah. <laughs> wrapping it up. It's really good. Yeah. It, I mean, just like I, I agree with a lot of that. Like yeah. the urgency with the with the city falling and everything mm-hmm. is is really good. And like, 
uh, I thought the death of Quicksilver is good. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It's not like it's not impactful enough that like I I get really attached and I'm like, yeah. dang, that's gonna be hard to rewatch. And everything but, like, with the Bartons like, is very good. Yeah, yeah, like I mm-hmm. yeah I mentioned that earlier and like yeah. everything with that, but like yeah, so it's just like it, it's a good movie to like. It's hard for me to watch Star Wars Episode Three again, even though I love it so much. Mm-hmm. Is because of like the impact and the emotional emotional connection that's like it turns on everybody. But like this doesn't have that like moment where I'm like, oh, that's gonna be hard to watch again. So like it's just a great action movie and it's an Avengers movie. You have all of them in it. Yeah. However, it does fall from being the lowest of having them all together, which I'm going to get into Mm -hmm. with my number six, which is the second lowest of the Avengers movies, which I put as Infinity War. All right. And that'll do it for episode 50. Okay, we're going to that'll be a punt. punt. That was your that was your number six. (laughs) That was your number six. six. Okay, TJ, who do, you want? do you want me to go next? And then oh, okay, I can go. I can go. Okay. I'll go. Please I'll go. explain real quick. Uh, well, you can about... explain when we get to the. We get to it. <laughs> we're gonna sulk, okay? Yeah, we're gonna get there. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll circle back. Whatever. But that's what the um, punt. That's what the punt is. That's what the punt so we'll, is. So yeah. we save the conversation. We honor the conversation okay. with the higher number. Basically, that's the good. Yeah, way to it. that's fine. Fine. So. Here we go. Here come. Uh, get ready. <laughs> to me, there these two. Okay, so for number ten, to me, the, I had these two interchangeable, but I think, my, the one I ultimately chose, I just it out. I had Black Panthers and Homecoming. Ultimately, I have Homecoming at ten. Um, can we talk about that now, or do we have to wait? Uh, yeah, because remember I said it was it was my ten, but it's my eleven, so it didn't make the list. So you guys can oh, okay. talk about it. Yeah. Okay, so personally, when I saw this, when the whole reveal of Michael Keaton was the dad, that I oh. like the the, the, the theater went <laughs> with the light on. His yeah, face, like that. Going from yeah. red to green once he figures it out. And that Great whole direction. thing thought oh, fantastic. Um, yeah. oh, again, this so is good. I know I know people who complain like, you know, Tom Holland couldn't care the movie. So Marvel put Robert Downey Jr. in it um, to kind of help him, I guess. Um, I, I get that, but I thought it also showed a very good relationship between the two characters mm-hmm. um same yeah absolutely. and i love vulture i never thought i would dig vulture as a villain mm-hmm. and this movie made me really like him yeah um really and overall i just bad. thought it was really good oh i yeah. really would just love i don't care what you call it mcu s-u-m-c-u or whatever the hell they're calling yeah. the sony yeah. thing give me give me keaton's vulture give me michael mando scorpion mis- like mm-hmm. jill and hall's mysterio morbius whoever you want to tom hardy's venom whatever I, yeah with this i okay, trust yeah yeah i trust this whatever this sinister six is that they're building i trust mm-hmm. this i want to see a movie with with yeah. these villains all put together i mean that I, that would be yeah. so great that is why homecoming so keaton's vulture is why homecoming etched out and went all the way up to eight because yeah. i think that it, to and i i guess like infinity war also so is like good. this is because if the villain if you can even relate to the villain and his purpose, mm-hmm. like he was a part of the rebuilding after the battle of the battle of New York. And like, he's like, man, this is like, I'm, I'm getting screwed over at my job. Like right. I should just make my own money by selling these weapons that I'm finding. And like, so it, it made sense and you can actually like feel for that, but like, you know, what's wrong. So mm-hmm. Peter does have to put a stop to it. And I just thought like the, the interactions like you said with him and michael keaton the car the whole reveal mm-hmm. of that and then just like the i mean i really enjoy tom like i said i really enjoy tom holland as mm-hmm. spider-man and like you said the whole the boat scene with tony stark like actually appearing instead of just sending a suit oh like, yeah that was another moment where i was like oh my gosh like this is real yeah like, you really like, feel that out. Yeah, yeah he like steps out it's like that whole like it's like all of your disappointing or embarrassing acts all rush to your like stomach and you get that mm-hmm. pit in your stomach again. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, damn, like I feel for Spider-Man right now. Like he fucked up and now he like is accusing Tony Stark of not caring and yeah. all that. And it's just oh, like, I just love when RDJ, face. like when he's like, when he's like, this oh, what would happen if you would just listen to me? And he's like, no, 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 z- shut up. Like, he's like, yeah. he's like, I think he's that, a zip it, but he's like, he's yeah. like, the adults are speaking. Stop talking. Like, you literally could have just killed 
five hundred people stop yeah. talking. Like, like, and you're like, like you said, yeah, like you're like kind of your those... gut just like drops. Yeah, oh my god! One of those moments. So I, I, like you said, I just really, I really like the movie. Yeah. All right. What's what's next for you, TJ? TJ, what number was um, that? Was that was number ten. Ten. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, real quick, I'm gonna move over because Danielle's come in and do homework. So I'm just gonna move, like, move yeah. my camera. Unless I'm cropped out. Can you even see over yeah, here? Yeah, you or can no? see her whole. Yeah, desk, you can. Yeah. Okay. Can Can I ask you, Sean? I, I don't want you to get spoilers because yeah. I do want to talk about this movie if you don't have it. But do you have Black Panther? Right, in I'll your be back in one second. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Do you have uh, Black Panther in your top ten? No. Okay. So I want to talk about why it, and I know we're probably going to get hated. I really like Black Panther, but like I said, mm -hmm. like it's just the the movie felt really powerful, and it, and I love it for like being all African American cast and everything, and yeah. like the message it sent. I I'm a huge Black Panther fan. Like he's one of my favorite heroes in the whole MCU. It was just like the story didn't connect with me. I get it, like he fights uh, Michael B. Jordan character Killmonger comes in and is like, Oh, I'm going to like take over because it's also my rightful, like it's my yeah. birthright to come in and challenge for it and everything. Like I get that. It's just like, it's not, that wasn't powerful enough for me. And so like, that's why like at Blackwood and I feel like there was more comedy, like we said, which does play a really mm -hmm. huge part in a movie. Yeah, it was just a little bit more like you and had Black the Never Panther Freeze was like thing. the like yeah or like what are those and it's like okay like but like yeah. I feel like the comedy was just more genuine in Black Widow, right? Yeah, it was sure. it was definitely it was definitely more relatable. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, okay, so Resume. my num number nine, my number okay. nine is Guardians one, right where I had it. Yeah, was just that a, a fun movie? No? Nope. Right. Sean? Oh, okay. Nope. Um, yeah, just a fun movie. The only thing that doesn't work for me in this movie is Ronan. I think he sucks in the villain. Hundred percent. Um, then he comes back in Captain Marvel, and I was like, he still sucks. <laughs> um, he's younger, but yeah. he still sucks. Yes. Um, that's all I really have to say. To Guardians. I haven't. Yeah. I think it's been a few months. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, Gar Guardians, Guardians is my uh, Guardians is my thirteen number thirteen on my list. Um, yeah, Gar Guardians number two could have been there, but like I, I also didn't really. Like Yandu's character was great and everything, but like it's just you like uh, Guardians too, right? I like I, I like Guardians one more, oh, but okay. like it, it it could be interchanged because there are aspects that I like of both, but I think that Guardians one just the the surprise factor of going to see it for the first time and being introduced to that style of movie. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Guardians, right, continue. Guardians two for me, I'll say, is it uh, twenty one? Nice. Um, number eight. Uh, this might be recency bias. <laughs> Loki? I have Loki at number eight, yeah. Loki is at number eight? Yeah. Oh, honey. Uh. I told you, it might be recency bias. <laughs> uh, um, all right, I mean, talk about it. Not on my list. Not on my list. I feel thought... like a lot, of, a lot of the miniseries will be included, so I, I mm. can't really say much to them. Right. Um, is this is, as yeah, I've said list. before, this was my next most anticipated after WandaVision. Yeah, you were really looking um, forward to it. So, and it again, it, Loki, I basically cracked the entire MCU open, mm -hmm. basically. Um, we had obviously a Jonathan. Oh, sorry. I just realized never we never Spoiler. actually Spoiler. finished. We never did Loki like uh, a, <laughs> we didn't, but <laughs> we never did a finale recap. Um, Keep an eye out on everybody the was we'll great eventually. Yeah. Tom Middleton was awesome. Uh, what's yeah. her name again? Who, who, Sophia who Martino. Sophia Dermartino was amazing. Owen Wilson was fantastic. Great chemistry with Tom Middleton. Bother Raw, Renslayer, yep. really, really yep. great character. Very good. Um, Hunter, Hunter B fifteen. Can't forget about her. Mm -hmm. I, last, I think I mostly have it. Eight. Forgot about her, but uh, yeah, we can't. Mostly at uh, number eight, I just have it there because I think it just kind of the MCU is like, psh, you know what I mean. Um, number seven. <laughs> This I would be surprised if this is not a punt on Sean's list. I don't know how Brandon feels about this movie. So, and this is a movie I have uh, I recently had a new appreciation. Don't say! For. Don't even say! I swear to God. My yeah, number I'll seven right is. Now, it's not on my top ten. If it's what I think it is, not in your top I, ten. I can't even believe. 
You are not doing a switcheroo of this magnitude right now. Is it Ant-Man the first one? Yes, it is. Oh my <laughs> god, you son of a bitch, bro. <laughs> I did I just, really enjoy that movie. It's so hard. I, I love the it. The second time, so much. I uh, just watched it pretty recently, and I thought, right, Brian, do you have this on your list anywhere or no? Nope. I, okay. I, it was going to be on the list. It just, yeah. I couldn't fit it. It's probably number 12 on the 10 list. 10 is like, like, it's just like, when there's 25 titles that you're dealing with, 10 is such a small number. Mm-hmm. Like, it's great. <laughs> I thought, I, but like Ant-Man and Wasp would be so far down. Right. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I originally was like, Ant Man's boring. I watched it maybe you last month it. or two months ago. You were no, like, I didn't, I didn't hate it. I was not a fan. And then I watched it and I had a great wow. time. It was so funny. Yeah. Uh, I know. It's Paul so great. great. Like, it's so good. <laughs> so that's my number seven. Movie. And yeah, uh, really good in it, too. it would be in my top 15. Yeah. I'll say that. It's my, it's, it's, uh, well, we'll get, I'll, we'll get there. Whatever. And my number six is, Ragnarok. Is is Ragnarok a punt for you, Brandon? Nope, that's number twelve. That would definitely okay, be number twelve. We, we could talk about Ragnarok now because it's my number eight. Okay. Um, this rejuvenated the Thor uh, trilogy of movies. Thor's mm-hmm. movies in general, up to this point, they had been lackluster to not good. Um, Thor Ragnarok really hit it out of the park. I thought with all the comedy that Taika brought to the script. Um, we had obviously we had Hulk uh, again, which is great, and Mark Ruffalo, of course. Uh, Hera, right? Hela. Kate Blanchett. Hela. Hera is um, the captain yeah. from Star Wars Rebels. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and we had um, obviously Tom Middle sitting as Loki. Um, the highlight of that movie for me is undoubtedly on the bridge where they start playing uh, Thunderstrike, right? Is that the song? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And is it Thunderstrike? Or- no, no, no. Thunderstruck. It's not Thunderstruck. It's. Oh. Yeah, it's. No, it's Immigrant Song. Thunderstruck oh, is yeah, Iron yeah. Man song. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin. That's what they start. And, you know, he's got the lightning in both hands, Palpatine oh. style, and he's killing dudes, and it's Palpatine fantastic. <laughs> and you know, Loki, like, sliding on his knees, Thor. killing dudes. And, Thor says, yeah. I am all the Asgardians. <laughs> yeah. And then you have Carl Urban. Who doesn't love Carl Urban? Bro, the line delivery of Carl Urban in the beginning of that movie where he goes, behold, my stuff. <laughs> it's yeah. just like, he just goes over. It's yeah. just a bunch of earth shit. Like he's yeah. got like this shake weights. Yeah. It's like, yeah. And even again, Mark Ruffalo is great. And, you know, when they're in the arena, he's like, oh, I know him. He's a guy from work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hem- I, I swear to God, hilarious. Hemsworth. I mean, he brings the drama in Infinity mm-hmm. War and Endgame, but I still think Hemsworth has never been better comedic in any of his movies. And I think he's one of the best comedic actors working right now. Um, Mm. And I'm glad that people are finally starting to notice that and cast him properly and things like that. That being said, Cabin in the Woods, Chris Hemsworth, uh, one of his first American movie roles, uh, actually filmed before Star Trek 09, but released after Thor because it was in development hell forever. Uh, He's in a comedy in that and he is fantastic. And then people just didn't cast him in comedies for like 10 years. And then Ghostbusters, they cast him and it was like, oh, this guy's like really freaking funny. Um, right. And I, I think he's still I think the funniest role he's ever had is Ragnarok. I think he's so good in that. Just the just the joy on his face where he's like looks up at Loki and the Grandmaster and he's like, oh, I don't have to fight him. Like he's like thinking, I don't have to fight him. He's my friend. You know, that's Bruce. <laughs> like and, and Hulk just like it's just yeah. so oblivious. Like. Thor's just like, oh my god, it's Bruce. I got this in the bag. Like you yeah. just see the joy on Chris Hemsworth's face, and then he just gets ragdolled, like mm-hmm. tossed around. Such a great scene. Um, oh my god, everything on Sakaar in that movie is so good. Yeah. Any thoughts, uh, Brandon, on, on Ragnarok? So with Ragnarok, I think what when I was evaluating movies, um, mm-hmm. I think I had a little bit of that reverse kind of feel where. I think that it was too highly regarded because of how mediocre one and two yeah, were, like how old and yeah. one. So like everyone was mm-hmm. like, "Oh my gosh, finally!" Like you said, like a, a good Thor movie that we can get behind. So I was like, I, I thinking about it, it's like great, like good. It's, it's definitely like in discussion for like around the ten <laughs> slot, but uh, obviously edged out just slightly by Black Panther and Black Widow. But um. 
I thought that like Jeff Goldblum was the whole thing. The "It's My Birthday" song was oh my god, hilarious. Yeah, like, it's where my he's birthday. like talking about yeah, the char- <laughs> Um, gosh, the character, the the little sidekick character in the in the Coliseum, the the dude who's in Core, uh, the Fortnite guy. Oh, Tycho's Core. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so his character I thought was Cassolf fantastic. Ghost. <laughs> yeah. yeah, his his character is fantastic. Like, yeah. the hardest I've laughed in any MCU movie. Um, yeah, just, like, really good. I just didn't really, like, connect with the we story. Need a, I, we I, need a Korg I, variant in Loki season two. Yeah, Korg, yeah. So, <laughs> oh it's just, like, like, I love, and I, I you, talk, you talked about Loki, like, there are very few actors. Oh, he's great in this, too, yeah. Play. And like Tom Hiddleston is Loki. Like mm-hmm. if there is an epitome, like I think about that like with like Harry Potter and I think about that with a lot of the MCU. Is like these people cannot be replaced because of how yeah. well they take their roles. Yeah. And so like Tom Hiddleston is really good in it. Chris Hemsworth is Thor. And like I'm a big Thor person. Like yeah. out of the MCU, like I got me and my wedding party all had our little MCU shirts under our tuxes for it, and we did the whole like mm-hmm. Superman thing. I was Thor because I've always been Thor. My brother's Captain America. Whatever. But so like I've always been a bigger Thor fan. But like I just thought that like the whole story of him and Hela is just like a little not all there. But like I thought the comedy was probably the best out of any MCU movie. Mm-hmm. So I thought that like it's it, it definitely deserved a spot. But like it's just hard when the story was a little lackluster compared to like the top. Like like Sean said, these are twenty five titles that i could easily watch over and over again mm-hmm. and if i have to narrow it down to a top 10 like it was hard for me yeah like there had to be a lot of criteria going for you too and i think that the best part of ragnarok is just the comedy gotcha yeah all right so sean your top i'll say uh, i'll say one thing 10. on ragnarok um that, yeah. that we kind of touched on I think severely overlooked and underrated in that movie is Tom Hiddleston as Loki. I think he gets a lot of credit for all the performances that he's given. I feel like he gets a little lost in the mix when pe- not in the movie, but when people talk about Ragnarok, I feel like they don't bring him up as much. And I think all the stuff, I mean, you see it again, brought up, you see the actual scene again in the Loki television series, but the scene with the two of them in the elevator where Thor's like, you know, mm-hmm. he's like, you know, Loki, I thought, the world of you i thought i thought you were the coolest person in the entire universe i thought we were gonna fight side by side Mm -hmm. together for the rest of our lives and like just be you know you know what i mean like all this stuff and chris hemsworth is you know saying all this stuff and it's he's not saying it like he's sad he's saying it like i accepted this years ago that you and that's a big thing that he always he's thor's telling loki throughout that whole movie is you are never going to change. You keep saying that you're going to change. And I keep, I keep getting my hopes up that you're going to change, but you, you're never going to. And it's like Tom Hiddleston's just like silent, like taking in what his brother's saying to him, like, in just like the look on his face. I think that's like one of the best, uh, one of the best acted scenes, uh, between the two of them in the, in, in all the scenes that they've had together. Uh, I just love that elevator scene with the two of them. Their chemistry is probably why I enjoyed Thor so much. I think that, the whole chemistry is mm-hmm. fair. And I know TJ doesn't, I don't think you do either, but like having an older brother is like, not. yeah, it's, it's like one of those feelings. It like, that is so relatable. Mm-hmm. How Loki feels to like Thor is given everything because he is the firstborn. Yeah. And it's like, you're, you're in the shadow constantly. And like, I really connect to that as being a younger brother and I'm an older brother. So like mm-hmm. I feel like in both feel both sides of it. So like, yeah. 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 So like it's just like I feel that like you are always overshadowed. And like, yes, you do want to do everything your brother's doing, and then finally like you break off into your own shell and then it's like taken as like betrayal. Yeah. And so to do your own thing mm-hmm. as like I have. And so I thought Also imagine you're the younger brother and then you also find out you're adopted. Right. <laughs> like you also find out like you weren't even the second born you were you know what i mean like right. you weren't even part of that um it connects to black widow like the whole thing of like non-biological yeah. family trying to be family and i thought that was i think yeah. that's so powerful and i think that i had not had a respect for that 
because obviously I'm not put in that situation, mm -hmm. but like to have non-biological family, like I don't have step siblings or anything to like say that like, oh no, that is my sister, my brother or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. Big, uh, actually without him being in the movie or even being named, uh, a lot of Loki, uh, influence in Black Widow because we got the Alexi references when Loki said, you know, her, he's like, your ledgers must be dripping red. Like he says it like a positive thing. And then also first time we ever heard about Dracoff's daughter was from Loki in the first Avengers movie. That's what he's taunting her about is the whole Budapest thing and talking about Dracoff's daughter. And we, we heard all that from Loki for the first time, which I think that's so cool that like, it's like, it's just so cool how everything's so interconnected. Like, I know that's the most obvious thing to say about the MCU, but it's just so cool that it's like this line that Loki said in a movie 10 years ago is now influencing this new movie that, you know, has nothing to do with any of that. <laughs> like, it, it's just yeah, so cool. That's how they honor things that way. Yeah. Like, like they, they will take, they know you they think said something it and then... won't pay off and then they'll bring it back around a decade later and pay it right. off. Like same thing with like abomination right? or what we said with like Thunderbolt Ross. Like we thought these storylines were just dead and they're like, no, mm. we're just, we're just not ready to bring him back yet. Like, you know what I mean? Still waiting like, on Tim Blake Nelson, but that's true, man. I know he's got to come back. Okay. So was that your six? That was my yeah. six. Yeah. Okay. So my, I mean, we've done a couple of mine. So age of Ultron is out. I'm assuming this next one's going to be a punt. Uh, my number nine is, you want to say it? I don't know. Oh, okay. WandaVision. That's a punt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so my number 10 is Age of Ultron. Number 9 is WandaVision. Number 8 is Ragnarok. My number 7, which this might be a punt as well, uh, is Iron Man. If it's in your top it's 5 or your top list. 3. Not on my list. It's not on either of your lists? No. Okay. I was I thinking I could put Iron Man somewhere on here. I, I, can, I can talk about what, but... We can go yeah. I mean, we're going to talk about it because well, it's not in our I, list, but. I mean, I just, it's what, I mean, it's Iron Man. It's, it's what. It started it's, the MCU. Yeah, yeah. it's I, what started <laughs> everything. It's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think Robert Downey Jr. is so good. I think, uh, say what you will about what happened with studio interference and also Ike Perlmutter bullshit on Iron Man 2, but I think John Favreau is one of the best directors we've had in the MCU. I would love yep, yeah. for John Favreau oh, yeah. to come back and direct an MCU movie again. Maybe. If John Watts is moving on to Spider or to uh, Fantastic Four, maybe you know have John Favreau direct Spider Man Four. I mean that. I mean he knows Tom. He's worked with Tom in every movie that Tom's mm -hmm. been in. Um, I think that's a really good dynamic. I would love to see Favreau back as a director, but regardless, uh, Favreau also as an actor. I really love Happy Hogan as a character. Uh, we're gonna yep, talk about I that totally a little bit later. Um, yep. I just love uh, Iron Man two thousand eight. I love uh obadiah stain you know i let you know tony stark built this stark. in a cave with a box of scraps yep. and then william who you know comes back in yeah. uh <laughs> far from home you know well i'm sorry but i'm not tony stark like i just yeah. oh, oh my and God, that, um the interaction um, is so good the, the, who's the guy in the cave i always forget his name oh yinsen man yinsen I, oh yeah, yinsen. god Yinsen is yeah. one of the best characters. He's right up there with Dr. Erskine, like Stanley Tucci from Captain America, like these catalyst characters that, you know, propel the hero onto their de ultimate destiny Journey. and stuff. Yeah. I, I just think it's such, it's such a trope in comic books and comic book movies, but I, I really think Yinsen is just like such a fantastic character for the limited screen time that he's in that. Uh, and then he gets his little, you know, pop-up cameo in Iron Man 3, uh, that again, that's a line that he says in the first Iron Man. He says, you know, I met you, you know, almost a decade ago in Switzerland. Uh, and then you see at the very beginning of Iron Man 3, you see them meeting. Like, even that stuff gets mm -hmm. paid off. Um, also, can't, can't go without saying, you know, my boy Phil Coulson, fantastic. Clark Gregg, uh, amazing in this movie. Um, obviously not in it as much as he inevitably ends up being in other movies um like he has a much bigger role in like thor and iron man 2 even um mm -hmm. but yeah just fantastic and uh gwyneth paltrow is very very good uh yeah yeah great movie next time i agree movie. fantastic next time so the only reason it's not in top 10 is because um there's so I many think... movies to think of mm -hmm. <laughs> right. so there's a lot to, there's a lot to take in but like aside from that 
Iron Man 2008 was the starter and like Thor Ragnarok. I tried to like distance myself from like, oh, okay, this is the starting movie, so I can't rate it too high because it's like just because it's a starting movie of everything. It is a very good movie. It's just like maybe it's recency bias, but like I just feel like there are things that like were amplified in other movies that just like like the graphics, the CGI, the, the mm. whole presentation, the whole dialogue mm. between characters. It's just it, it it ages well, but it, comparatively to other movies, it's just like mm-hmm. it's hard to go back and watch. So, like, and I, I totally I agree. Yeah. Spider Man One. It's and that's my issue with the first Avenger. So like the first Avenger, I, Captain America, the first Avenger. Mm-hmm. I just think that it's just like it did na- it did not age well. There's a good story in there, but like the the really? whole yeah the okay. whole chase scene when he first becomes the super soldier, I thought was like it looks terrible but like it's it's hard to get by but mm-hmm. if we're gonna push on but we can go on that's all no, I no yeah about totally right I, I i i un- i understand everything you're saying there though yeah and and in the words of jeff bridges you know they didn't have a script man you know they they, they, they <laughs> didn't they didn't have a script it was during the writer's strike it was john favreau and rdj and they were all write it down on post-its and they would run it between scenes and then they would shoot it just like that and it's like so I understand what you mean. It's like, it's just such a, it is the least finely tuned. No, never mind. Incredible Hulk is the least. Incredible finely Hulk. Tuned. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, and that's not saying the Incredible Hulk is the worst. Let me actually double check that. Yeah. Incredible double. Hulk is not the, the worst on my list, but uh, Incredible Hulk is the least finely tuned. Uh, but Iron Man 2008 is very not finely tuned. I will say that. There's a lot of stuff that's a little clunky, a little, like, wouldn't be in it nowadays. Uh, Like you said, the CGI, a lot of it is practical stuff, but, you know, some of the CGI is, uh, you know, doesn't hold up as well. A little bit of the the floaty head. Not so much with Tony, because that was a real chest piece. That was back when RDJ really did the the whole chest and then just had the CGI legs and stuff. Um, But uh, Jeff Bridges was full CGI. like Full CGI. Yeah, oh, and, yeah. <laughs> and, and as bad as Mark Ruffalo's floaty head looked in Infinity War, oh, this was Infinity ten, War, yeah. this was ten years previous. <laughs> so yeah. that the Iron Monger could have used some help in the CGI department, but but I still think the actual uh, Iron Man suit, like the scene where all the flaps, like where he's calibrating it and all the flaps are coming up and screwing back in and stuff, like I just think it looks so cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, everybody's got their own opinion. Um, okay. Speaking of number six. My number six is the Avengers. That's not on my list. That's a that's a punt, Brandon. All mm-hmm. right. So then let's go back to Brandon. And so Brandon, you give your number five, and then TJ will give his number five, and then I'll give my number five, and then we'll go you know round robin after that. All right. So number five is Winter Soldier, Captain America. Punt. Winter Soldier. Uh, my number five is also Winter Soldier, but we'll punt it for TJ. All right, so TJ number uh, five. My number five is Civil War. Punt. Uh, that is a punt. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Uh, my number five is Captain America: The Winter Soldier, <laughs> which we already punted. So, what's your number? Okay. Five, or what's your number four, Brandon? Far from Home. Not on my list. TJ, my number four is Spider-Man: Far from Home. I cannot oh, say enough. I think I you're both fucking, crazy. I don't know. I fucking <laughs> love Far from Home. So much, I got into an not an argument, but a heated discussion oh, with sure. our buddy uh, Christopher, um, yeah, at work the other day. Uh, he doesn't hate it. He's just, you know, to him, he's like he wishes he, he the thing that he said was he was like I wish they went with like Miles or something. He was like it just does. Yeah. It's totally his own opinion and everything. He's yeah. We've not seen Donald Glover. Opinion. I know he's not Miles, but we've not seen him since Homecoming, and I know yeah. he has a connection in some way to Miles Morales. <laughs> yeah, and he goes. He was just like to him the john watts movies like they just don't feel like peter parker and it's like i can understand that on some level but at the same time peter parker has changed so many times in the comics this is this is way more peter parker than i'm sorry side. i'm sorry this is way more peter parker to me than like andrew garfield or even specifically toby mcguire i think toby mcguire is my personal favorite spider-man 
But I'm okay. Hated on for that. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm just breaking it down real quick. Tobey Maguire is the best Spider-Man. Uh, Tom Holland is the best Peter Parker and Spider-Man mix. I'm not a big fan of Andrew Garfield, but I think his Spider-Man is okay. But I hate his Peter Parker, and I love Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, but I hate his Peter Parker. But I think Tom is a perfect mix of both. Um, I think you're right. Yeah, I. Uh, Although, and and I, I, for two very different reasons for Andrew and Toby. Toby's way too melodramatic and sad, and that's not his fault. That's the writing. Uh, and Andrew Garfield is way too he's, he's way too cool, man. He's got his little skateboard. He's got his like sh- crazy hair. He's he's you know he's he needs to be more, uh, you know, kind of skateboard shitty. I guess <laughs> yeah, like I don't know like, like <laughs> he was supposed to be like this nerdy. It, it just it, the whole thing with like his dad's glasses and he wears them like that's how he like looks and like that's going to be his like i didn't like that it, it, he just comes off very like quirky and not in the good quirky that peter You're talking Parker about garfield like. right yeah garfield yeah yeah, yeah. But, and i already voiced my concerns over mcguire i thought he was way too old he did not i just don't like mcguire mm-hmm. i guess like whatever but i feel like tom holland is peter parker that i like you said like christopher yeah. said that he's not but like i think yeah. he is like the epitome of what peter parker should I be would agree with that yeah absolutely. i think he needs to be a little like he is nerdy and he, they like did bring in like a little bit of techie when they get to civil war like he's like taking all the old computers or whatever like he picked up a new keyboard or whatever and it's and he aced his math test and like whatever yeah. so like but like he needed to be a little bit like i feel like it's more nerdy he doesn't talk to many people mm. it's mm. he seems a little bit the, too the only people he, do, he does talk to is like the the mathlete you know <laughs> yeah like it, yeah he but like tom holland i, I guess like it, but it's a superhero so like he, yeah. he is just a little too suave but like far from home mysterio's character jick gyllenhaal was oh, fantastic yeah like one of my favorite villains in the mcu so okay get out of here with that look. no i i, I like jake G- i about? like i like mysterio i just i think homecoming is, i don't thing i just I don't know. I just think Homecoming is just a better movie. It's just a better movie. As a, in my opinion, it's a better villain. Because again, like Brandon said originally, Michael Keaton is relatable. Like, I'm not saying I'm not really relating to Mysterio in any way, shape, or form. But a good villain um, doesn't have to be. No, like, it doesn't have to be. I'm like, wrong. Like, no, you're like, not wrong. Like, Jake Gyllenhaal's like. I just mean, I, I didn't, that's not what I meant yeah, when I yeah. said that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like Jake Gyllenhaal's like when. Tom Holland walks outside out of the bar and Jake John all turns mm-hmm. the camera. He does that sinister like grin. Like that was great. Like, don't get me <laughs> that like, thing? that's like, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I, I definitely, I was say? definitely goes, thrown oh, for a loop. He's like, that wasn't so hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. So thrown for a loop when he was like talking to Peter and everything. I was like, I lean over Danielle. I was like, this guy's supposed to be the fucking villain. I don't know what the fuck is going on here. <laughs> and then, you know, this whole turn, everything. I thought that was, but yeah, I, I just think that was a better movie. Yeah, I, I can get into yeah. Far From Home and why I like it so much because Jake Gyllenhaal's character is, like, like I said, I grew up watching the cartoons and I know Mysterio's a bad guy. So, right. like, I, I, and the whole intro and the whole, like, trailer, like, showed him to be a good guy and I was like, mm-hmm. man, I am not gonna like this. Like, this is not gonna, like, whatever, maybe they can tweak it, it's the MCU, whatever. And then that twist to, like, make him the bad guy mm-hmm. was so perfect and, like, worked so well. And then the thing that really sticks with me with that character is it did seem insurmountable for Peter Parker to overcome for yeah, Tom Holland. To I overcome. agree. I agree. 100%. It gave me that feeling like this is impossible. Like he is not doing this. Yeah. Like Vulture, he can, he can fight with Mysterio just felt like he was just like, he had, and he doesn't have mind. Tony. Right. And he had to use like his actual wits to try and outsmart this adult Mysterio who is a mm-hmm. super villain who made the world believe that he was fighting giants. Yeah. And right. like yeah. he has to outsmart him to do that. And it just felt so insurmountable that mm. when it, when he finally overcomes that, it felt so much more relieving. And then the ending with J. Uh. Jonah Jameson uh. coming back, just like the, <laughs> Sing on the cake that put it all into like yes this yes. is the movie i agree ten thousand percent also i will say i think <laughs> zendaya uh who didn't obviously didn't get as much play in homecoming she is fantastic 100%. in far One from home favorite... she is she's my favorite uh, love interest of spider-man's yeah. 
uh, and she is one of my favorite characters in this whole new Spider-Man mm -hmm. franchise. Um, I hope that if the rumors are true and they're, you know, after this trilogy wraps up, they do a next one. I hope that she carries over. She said a couple things in the press recently that was like, well, and you know, we signed on. Apparently for free. they're dating. Yeah. Apparently, <laughs> that yeah, in real life. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. they like kissed or whatever. Yeah, yeah I did see that. Um, uh, which but, apparently yeah. it, it runs in the uh, playing Spider-Man family because yeah. every single Spider-Man has dated their co-stars apparently yep. at one point, <laughs> yep. which I think is hilarious. Um, all right. Who's next? Right, where Me? were we at? Oh, that was uh, who said far from home. Your num we need your number four. Yeah, we need your number four. Me. All right. Oh, <laughs> My I number four. Said... No, you said what? five. Was four. five. My number four is WandaVision. I know WandaVision has some tough episodes there. Talk about but recency bias. The core, the core <laughs> of this show is the relationship of, you know, Wanda, Vision, and how Wanda's dealing with the grief. And I just think it all comes together so, so wonderfully. Um, I know, like, you you know, you have Catherine Hahn. Obviously, everybody's fucking amazing in this show. Yeah, um, absolutely. And this show was the show that everybody was like, every week. I mean, I feel like it was that way with Loki a little bit, but this with WandaVision every week, what's going to happen? What, what are they hinting at? You know, you get these little things here and there, mm -hmm. Mephisto here, Mephisto that, you know, it's not Mephisto. Oh my God. And they're literally telling you right in front of you, like, Hey dummy, it's right in front of you. But just the, the foundation building that they did with just, I think Wanda and Vision's relationship is just, I think is rivals like, the best relationship in the MCU for me, like obviously you have Tony Pepper up there, um, Steve and what, Peggy. Who's the best, you know. in your opinion? For me, the one I I love the most is Wanda and Vision. Um, I love both those characters as well. Um, you know, and this show just kind of confirmed that for me. Um, but I and this is still for me the number one MCU show so far. Um, it goes like this WandaVision, Loki, and then Falcon Winter Soldier. Um, but I, yeah, I just love this show so much. <laughs> it had to be up there for me. Before, <laughs> before Sean talks about why he had it yeah. a little bit lower, but still on his top 10. But so I have watched like a recap of the series. Yeah. So this is the only thing that I've watched. Like I haven't watched a recap on Falcon Winter Soldier. I haven't watched a recap on Loki because mm -hmm. I actually wanted to watch those because talking to people who are also huge MCU buffs, they said that it was the weakest of the three. And I mean, like, I'm not... I just don't get that. Of the shows? You, of the shows, yeah. Wow, so, like, I, just, I don't get just, that, yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right, so, like, whatever. So, like, I just was like, okay, let's see what, like, the whole thing is about because they just didn't like the whole, like, startup episodes or whatever it was. And then, yeah, those are a tad slow. I get that, yeah. Yeah, it's just, like, it, it didn't do as much for some people. Whatever. Yeah. So, like, it's just outside input i watched the recap the storyline seemed pretty good that like she traps all those people but mm -hmm. there were some issues that then follows where she just doesn't feel any remorse for like holding those people hostage right she doesn't like apologize yeah. or anything and it's just like this whole anticlimactic like she held them there for what like three weeks or whatever it was and so, like, yeah whatever yeah so, <laughs> i don't like, know how long just, exactly yeah, so it just like yeah. felt like I would definitely watch it now that I know what happened. So mm -hmm. I can like, I don't because then if I watch and I don't know what's happening, I get bored really easily because right. it's like hard. To, if like if I can't mentally process it, maybe I'm just dumb. But like I just I can't follow things, and then I just like I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, how much more can I? Really? And I tried this with like anime, and I'm like, I just sometimes I just can't follow the story, and I just yeah, it's it's not for yeah. me so whatever but yeah so that's what i've heard on wandavision that's my take from watching a recap yeah. so it, it yeah definitely looks like i yeah like wanda's character i think that like scarlet witch is definitely really powerful it's hard to contain her to not be so powerful as she is in the comics um and then vision character i just it's it's hard to like comment on because i feel like it's only in those couple movies and then like you make a whole mm -hmm. series with him and it just feels like pushed back and it mm -hmm. like like we said earlier like they don't take death as serious and i think mm -hmm. that it's something that like the MCU yeah. does lack yeah 
Sean, yeah. do you have anything on WandaVision? Yeah, why you put oh, it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really, uh, I really liked it. Um, I'm the not the exact opposite, but I, I really, um, another person who is really big uh, favorite of mine is Vision. Um, so I really loved this series. Um, I will say, I feel like you're right with you know the thoughts that you took away from the recap, but I will say it feels a lot more. What I'm trying to remember what exactly you said that like it, she doesn't feel remorseful and that it felt kind of oh yeah anticlimactic you said like um I will say there is a lack of remorse there like there, no yeah there she is. definitely kind of gets away scot free but it is because of what happens like she is it's yeah, like I, you don't good. see God it. like <laughs> to these people like you don't see like God and then be like like have god have like a showdown with the devil in the sky above you and then go like you held me here We're like come on man like they're probably like wanda can vaporize me with like yeah. uh with like an eyebrow twitch like you know what i mean like um but that being said i don't think the ramifications of what she did in this series are over um so oh, i no, think that i know i don't think at all yeah. i think the way that they the way that the, it's paced and the way that it's set up and the way the after credit scene plays i think she's going to I don't think it's I've been saying this for a year. I think everybody's expecting like a team up in Doctor Strange 2. I think it's going to be more of a OK, like I've been calling it like a babysitting adventure, like or it's like, all right, you're coming with me because what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, I'm going to watch you and like, hey, if you're this crazy witch, let me train mm -hmm. you and properly train you because you can't be doing this shit like that kind of thing, like. That's what I think it's going to be. So I th I think a lot of Doctor Strange 2, and of course I could be completely wrong, um, you know, but I think a lot of Doctor Strange 2 is going to be them uh, dealing with the fallout of what she did um, mm -hmm. and, and her trying to process it and Steven trying to help her uh, understand her powers and understand what to do with them. Right. Yeah, I'm definitely going to catch up. I, I what that. you said, though, but I am surprised that people would say it's the story like the it's kind of the weakest because for me like in my opinion they're all like very good stories but for me the one that like falls a little bit shorter is falcon Winter soldier not because of the whole you know black man being captain america or anything but with the whole flag smashers and the villains for me yeah, that the was villains were a little weak but again that was a change yeah. from the pandemic so it's like right so yeah it's, it's little, so hard to yeah. judge some of these because they're so um they've been affected so much like mm -hmm. even wandavision you know how a lot of people were like you know saw the first two episodes and they were like what the hell is this well, they've right. been very public with it was supposed the first week was supposed to be the first three episodes. So you were supposed to get three episodes of the sitcom and then the reveal of Monica flying out into the real world. That was all supposed to be in the very first viewing. And that got delayed a little bit. So I think if if you had seen the real MCU world and the very first time that you experience WandaVision, as opposed to having to wait another week, um, I think it would have, I think it would have flowed yeah. better. Cause it's yeah. like, otherwise you get those two that are just the sitcom, no mm -hmm. other information. Uh, and then episode three is kind of like, Oh shit. But like, imagine if you got all of that at once, you know, I think it would, I think yeah. it would lean you. Uh, what is, what's it called? What am I trying to say? It would kind of, gently bring you into the series a little bit easier uh yeah. easily digestible to understand okay so this is some kind of a you know wormhole fake reality yeah. invisible barrier type show uh but you and should, then i think uh, people definitely should check out all the shows no matter what yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> i'd say a quick uh, ranking i would say i think right now i'd have to rewatch them but I think I would go WandaVision, Falcon, and then Loki. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Loki, for me, I know we haven't done a full review, but it just, I think it fell a little bit short at the at the end. Um, People are calling it fantastic, like 9 out of 10, like 90%. I, I, I like think there's a couple places, it. there's a couple big places where it falls down from that. I think if you had select episodes uh or to or reworked some of the stuff i think you'd be looking at a 10 out of 10 um but yeah i just think there was a couple places where it was like that they, they get to a point and then they choose the least interesting route to go in my opinion um 
but yeah. so all right okay. so what so what's going on so brandon's <laughs> number three. three right yeah yes yep number two of the avengers wait wait, wait, wait. oh yeah, yeah number three okay sorry i thought you were saying you're yeah. doing number two number three no no no. so like the second ranked avengers movies out of the four okay end game and number three is number three uh, that's yeah. that is also pun. my my number three that's a punt okay okay uh so, so no it's your number three. Oh, right. that's, that's, end, that's end game, game. End game. Uh, yeah. so my number three is infinity war wow okay is, is that, that a punt on, for you TJ? Where's that that's on a punt you, TJ? yeah oh, okay <laughs> okay so then i guess we'll talk about end game now yeah um right, is that number two sean is that why yeah it's my number two okay all right so with end game uh wraps up everything great ending fantastic um only thing I don't like about it is the time travel. I, I think that introducing time travel... When I first originally watched Endgame, I thought it was just, like, a cop-out. I'm like, like, come on. Like, I thought it was going to be a fight with Thanos to try to get back the Infinity Stones, like they do, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. whatever. But that's all done within the first five seconds. I thought the comedy was pretty good. Uh, but yeah, it's just... It's, it was a very good rap up on the whole series and then nothing 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 will beat the reveal of when falcon says on your right oh on left your left. And on then your left. Your left i meant that's <laughs> I, I messed that up and i it's I, okay, I was going to, it's okay. It's on your left and i was gonna say yeah. like black panther walking out first like when oh they, when yeah they, i mentioned it on facebook the one time but like the biggest thing they changed about that whole scene from script was that Black Panther came out of Wakanda and he's the first one to show up. Yeah. Like the first one to come out of the the dimensions from Strange, mm -hmm. but like I just I that battle is like it was just like everything built up for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not like they were just going to blow by because they had all the Avengers. But they had like the armies from like Asgard, they had the Valkyries, they had the, the armies from Wakanda, yeah, mm -hmm. Wakanda, they had the sorcerers, but they're facing down like all Thanos the Ravagers whole, too, like from space, yeah, the yeah. whole army. Like it's not just like Thanos versus all of them. Mm -hmm. Like what Infinity War tried to do, and that ending scene, that whole last half hour, whatever it is, with Tony Stark's death, and then the funeral, whatever. Forty three and a half minutes. Yeah, forty three and a half minutes. That whole Ooh. thing is the best 43 and a half minutes out of all of the hours and hours of MCU footage. So mm -hmm. uh, it just, that's what ranked it higher than infinity war. Um, but we'll get into infinity war in a little bit. Yeah. I agree. That's my, um, end game. Well, can I go? You can go. <laughs> that's cool. Um, end game, like brand said, you just, it fucking I tied it with, you know, cherry on top is fantastic. Um, fucking when they chopped his head off in the beginning i was like what the fuck are we doing now like i you know what i, I had no idea what was happening and again the dimensions still get chills watching that scene um mm -hmm. when captain america picks up the hammer and thor's like yeah, i knew it yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, another pay payoff just... yeah <laughs> did you see that okay so did you see that one theory that like it's Captain America, what he does something between Age of Ultron. Oh, he admits to Tony that um, Bucky killed uh, Tony's family. Oh, I've seen that theory. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Made him worthy. That was like the like, thing that was holding him oh. back from being because in he Age of Ultron, sort of, yeah, he yeah. only sort of move it, but because he still had that lie that he kept from Tony. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now huh. it's like he's burning about that. shit. Yeah, I like yeah. that theory. Yeah, I do. I really. That's like a good that theory. Yeah, because yeah. it's like that's the one time that we knew that like. He had a fault kind that of. That is like, like he if was, he if yeah. he's, if you're keeping that from Tony like you're not. Yeah. we'll get into it. <laughs> we'll talk so, about it. Yeah. So the other thing about the game, real quick, because oh, you had brought it up, because yeah. you said the different the different dimensions. When they go back in time, I don't I don't really like the cop out of traveling back in time. But when they go back in time and they go back to. Like the Battle of New York, stuff? Hell Hydra. Mm -hmm. When he oh, that's it. a great moment. Yeah, like Sitwell's oh, like funny, Sitwell's yeah. like we talk about payoffs. What? Yeah, we talk about like payoffs. Like that movie, going back in time, does that uh, so well. It's the mm -hmm. best 
fan service movie ever because yeah, all 100%. the fan service not like some other movie that came out later that year. <laughs> um all the fa- all the fan yeah, service it's my episode nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um all the all the fan yeah. service in that is so clearly fan service, but it is so earned. It's like yep. the, you don't you're not allowed to be like, well, that's so fan service. It's like, okay, it is literally they have they deserve every single victory. Like end or Infinity War was like the championship that they won. Endgame was like the victory lap. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. Infinity War was like, we just made one of the because I will admit, Infinity War is the better like film, one hundred percent. In my opinion, I think I think it's one of the best films in the MCU. Uh, but I like Endgame way not way more. I mean, one spot more. But I like mm-hmm. Endgame, you know, more for a lot of the exact same reasons that Brandon said. Um, but it's like Infinity War. They were like, okay, here's our like uh, magnum opus, yeah. and then here is all the payoff. <laughs> like here's just all the amazing shit that you've ever wanted us to do, that you've ever thought that we might do here it all mm-hmm. is and they and they pull i will say some time travel stuff aside whatever you know i, I think they pull off 95 percent of it flawlessly in endgame like without a doubt mm-hmm. yeah, yeah i'd agree whole, with that and the whole ending of tony stark and like his connection yeah. to his daughter and oh, yeah. him right. trying to live a better life but doing yeah. what's right i think that again harks happy back to, with the yeah harks back to number one where he he doesn't make the sacrificing play which i guess i can go mm-hmm. into my number two which is the first Avengers, which I believe is the best out of the four. And I will say because, number one, it is the first time they all got together. And I try to refrain from that, but there is something really special about seeing them all together for the first time. The tension between all of them upon the S.H.I.E.L.D. ship was fantastic. And it was just, like, one of the best, like, where they're, like, talking about, like, fighting each other mm-hmm. and they're like going like going at each other and like oh you want to put on like what are you like without your suit what are you like you're never making the sacrifice you play and he like flips mm-hmm. back with like rdj in that movie is great and his his fight with thor in the woods where he's talking about shakespeare like one of the best yeah like comedy Doth lines mother you know, know you wear it you wear her drapes, her drapes. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that like like what do you think this like you don't even know who i am oh you're shakespeare like Shakespeare in the park, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Shakespeare in the park. Yeah, he says that to him, and he's just like, "You have no idea what you're dealing with." And he's just like, and then when they're in Germany, and I think Loki being the main villain in that movie, the main antagonist. Oh, he's so great. good in that movie. And when they're in Germany and they're talking about like him controlling people, like this is where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be on your knees. You're supposed to be controlled, oppressed by people. And then Captain America shows up, and he brings apart. It, it, First, the guy stands up and he talks oh. about like not being like controlled by bullies. And then yeah. Captain America comes in. He talks. He makes a reference to Hitler. You know, the last time I was in Germany, me and a guy didn't get along very well who wanted to take control. Mm-hmm. And then Black, Black Widow's in the in the ship. And then right when Tony Stark asks her about what she's or like how she's doing or whatever he says. And then he overrides the stereo system. And he flies in. That is one of like another chills moment. Shoot the thrill, like, baby. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. And he comes. Mm-hmm. He comes down. And he's like he unmasks and he he's like cap. Mm-hmm. And then or he keeps his mask on, mask on. I'm remembering yeah. that wrong. And he just goes cap. And he's yeah. just like Tony. And then so I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, that's the first then, time they ever meet. Like that's the craziest right. part too. That's like, oh my god. Yeah. So like it's it's just like everything in one and. Mm-hmm. I love so when I get to it, and I I want to talk about this with Winter Soldier as well. But like the shield aspect of the movies, I thought were great. This death in this movie was the Coulson death, which I think uh, thought hit a little bit harder than Quicksilver because it was like, oh, he just wanted those cards to be signed, blah blah blah. Like you like felt that, and that's like what pulls them all together. So like it was a good death that served a purpose. But like I just I really 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 enjoy watching that movie it and I, I don't think it holds up great and i like the captain america suit is not good but like i think that like the movie is just 
talk about like Iron Man being significant, like that Avengers movie is gold. Yeah. And it only falls short to one movie, and we'll get to that. TJ? Um, yeah, TJ number two. Yeah, sorry. I really I agree with you there. Um, I think something that just real quick to touch on. Uh, I think it's I think it's in the first Avengers is um, I saw on TikTok recently uh, is when everybody's like talking to Bruce and they're fighting on the ship and something about Bruce like trying to kill himself. And he's like, you know, I tried to I tried. I stuck a gun in my mouth. I pulled the trigger and the the big guy just spit it out. And it was like, damn, like that's fucking heavy. You know, I love the um, way that that shot too, where you don't see Bruce's arm, and then you realize that he's he's grabbed the scepter off the table, and you realize yeah, yeah, you're yeah. like, why is every I, you're like, I know he's kind of going off right now, but why is everybody looking at him like that? And then Fury goes for his gun, and you're like, yeah. what the hell? And he's like, Doctor Banner, I'm gonna need you to put down the scepter, and then it cuts to the right. wide shot, and Bruce is like holding it, and he's like, he like <laughs> yeah, doesn't yeah. even know he doesn't even know yeah. how he picked it up, like, it, and you're like, yeah. yo, that's like like i mean obviously now we know it, it was the mind stone but like you're like mm. that's some crazy shit that like you don't even mm. he doesn't even know that it's affecting him like right oh my god what a great scene that um, scene with yeah. him in that room is amazing right um number two for me number two yep yep uh, my number two is winter soldier yep just a really really solid movie what Sean, was that on think, your list it... it was four. Oh, okay is that a puff for you sean or no no no, mine oh, was uh, oh. Winter Soldier was down. down really? Yeah. No. Winter, yeah, Soldier, Winter Soldier is like... my five. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, it, acceler- okay. it accelerated everything. It was like, to be like really fantastic. Happy. It was. I mean, it, it was a leap it. into the next. Yeah, it's a leap <laughs> into the next uh, series, and it's era. Just, yeah, it's just. Yeah. Great. it's kind it of was, like it it's like loki it's like it's like the great. loki of that phase it was like that's the mm-hmm. one that like got rid of shield shield was the thing right. that held the whole everything before that together mm-hmm. and they were like well what happens if the stabilizing force of this entire universe is yeah. gone just like that yeah. like and just that, the whole espionage like? like spy thriller yeah, aspect spy of thriller, everything Robert the Redford. whole like them like Robert redford them going into uh underground and the professor mm-hmm. still being like a com- he's being a, he's a computer and i can't yep. mimic his voice sean uh, you do a good imitation uh, captain <laughs> i have never been more alive <laughs> yeah like all that shit is so fantastic um and uh yeah can i real quick question real quick relationship question who has more chemistry bruce and natasha or natasha and steve like, who is more, like, relationship, like, you could see them dating? Bruce and Bruce Natasha. And Natasha. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. You're Steve fucking and crazy. Natasha are friends. They're just friends. I, I so, know, but, like, yeah. Bruce and Natasha, whenever, like, like, me and Danielle were watching, like, they looked just, like, the relationship just looked forced to me. Like, it just looked well, like they were, like, I don't know. It was, like, I don't know if it was the chemistry sense. between, like, Mark Ruffalo and Scarlett Johansson, because I don't think it's what it was, but it was just, like, their characters for me just did not mesh with each other. Sun's getting weird. kind of low, like, really connected with me. Like, I just, mm-hmm. I really like that whole thing where yeah. she just, like, tried to calm him down every single time, mm-hmm. and, like, him getting really pissed off when he finds out about her death and everything. It, I think that... It yeah, was, yeah. I still say the biggest was... question from Endgame, who, who, where did that bench land? Who did that bench <laughs> land on? He That'd be so the, great, like just a distant movie. Give like... us a Marvel one shot of like just yeah, like yeah. this random guy, and you're like, "What's this about?" And then at the end, he just gets yeah. smashed into the earth by a by a bench. Like, yeah. I mean, the man just, threw like, that bench. Toro. He oh, threw yeah. that bench like miles. Like he, yeah, he whipped that thing. Like it was gone. Yeah, oh you like felt the, the movie also felt for Steve Rogers and like trying to fight Bucky yeah. and not wanting to fight him. So it was just really good story and mm. changing, like we said, changing Hydra. But yeah, definitely. Yeah. Up um, there. yeah. So, Sean, your number two? Number. Uh, my number two was, no- was Endgame. Yeah. We oh, okay. We talked about that. So, number ones. So, we're at Civil my number War. one. Didn't we not Civil talk War. about yeah. Infinity War yet? We missed Yeah, because I had a punt. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm number sorry. One. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I got that. So yeah. Civil War, my honorary Avengers movie, 
the introduction of Spider-Man, yeah. the whole, it, it felt like an Avengers movie, maybe even more than Age of Al- Ultron did, but like, it, it just took everything together. Introduction of Black Panther, Black Panther's character was fantastic in it. If I'm just going to give a quick recap of like everything, the whole Tony Stark, Captain America dynamic is like the brotherhood thing that I talked about. You're like, you're fighting with your brother and you're trying mm-hmm. to get out of his shadow. And it's like, who's going to lead the Avengers? Well, one wants, like, you can see Tony's aspect with the Sokovian Accords. You can see Steve's aspect with, like, you shouldn't be controlling someone who can, like, save the world because you don't really know mm-hmm. what it's supposed to be like. And it's yeah. like, you can't really pull for either side, but I guess you get, like, pull more to, you can. towards you can. The, mm-hmm. <laughs> Captain America's side. Oh! But, like, you, like, the whole, the whole Wait, movie is behind side Captain are you America. On? Captain America. <laughs> Wait, you're you were on t- you're on Team Cap even after seeing the movie? Me? Yeah. 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 You're on Team Cap after seeing the film. With the Sokovian Accords, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Well, with the Sokovian Accords, that that's one oh, thing. Okay. I thought you I thought you meant in the fight, like No, 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 no. I mean yeah, the in the fight. When they're like arguing, Steve was when they're in, a little when office rocker is on talking that one. to them and they're just like sitting there in the office room. <laughs> Oh with, like, yeah, a big yeah. screen and he's like talking about like again. Rody controlled all, all everything. Rody says in that scene so, is so amazing. The other thing, Rody's impact in that movie, and I talked about when you were mentioning Rody before yeah. that I was going to get into later. It's fantastic. Rody's injury in that movie set everything up, and it just like it twisted everything to just accelerate. Like I said before, to the nth degree. And when Tony gets pissed off about that, when he's like, and that's when like all the fighting stops. Because it's like, this is a serious injury, and, like, Tony feels for that, and he gets really pissed off. And then you, like, feel for Tony even more after because of what happened to his parents and, like, everything. Yeah. It's just like, and he's left there by his, and I'll call him his brother, Steve Rogers. Like, his brother in arms, I'll say. But, like, yeah. he's left there, like, bleeding after mm-hmm. Bucky and him take him out. Oh, my he God. He can't say like, enough about Zemo, either. When he just goes, when when Tony is just like like you were saying like he's just he's like hunched up against the thing like just bleeding out onto the ground and he just goes he like musters all the strength that he has left and he just is like you know my father made that shield that shield doesn't belong to you like it's like he's like i am not letting this motherfucker walk out with that thing because that is that is (laughs) the person that that was his friend you know what i mean like like tony Tony always talks about he's like like even in civil war which by the way i'll say civil war is my number one obviously I don't know if wow. mathematically if people figure that out, but uh, so we had the same five up at the top. We just had yeah. Infinity War and and Game Switched or whatever. Yeah. three and four. I don't five. know how the fuck you did Infinity War at six. That's mind blowing to me. <laughs> but when you get to well, it. we'll but, get there. But but Civil War to me is is hands down is the best made film and my favorite film. Obviously, in my opinion, in the MCU. Um, but mm-hmm. like you were saying, like in that movie, even, you know, he he brings up all the time that, you know, his father never shut up about Steve, um, yep. which you actually see. There's a really emotional scene in the Agent Carter TV series where Peggy it's in season two. So Peggy has kind of the end of season one. She kind of accepts the loss of Steve and tries to move on with her life. But Howard in that show, actually, who's again played by Dominic Cooper, uh, there's like a great scene where he has like he's like flying uh over the ocean and like peggy's like trying to tell him like come back like he's not out there like he's gone like and like howard just will not stop looking for him and howard like starts crying on the phone like he has like a mental breakdown in the plane and he like starts to it's not even real but he's like he's like i i hear a signal i he must just be right over there and like peggy like starts crying and she's like he's gone like i loved him like i know that you loved him too like but Steve is gone and Howard it's like in that show, which obviously that show is, you know, say what you will. Both those shows currently are canon. Um, you know, it's like in that show, it's like they show you like really how much Steve meant to Howard because it was like Howard. There's also another great thing where it's like to Howard, Steve is the best thing that Howard ever created. You know what I mean? His life That's is like a shot with, at Tony. Yeah. It's like, it's like, Howard's whole company, his whole life is building weapons and creating things that kill people. And he's like, Steve is the best thing that I've ever had a part in making. And like, he can't accept that he's gone. And I was like, Oh my God, man, all that stuff. Like to me, one of my favorite MCU characters too, is like Howard Stark. Like 
that whole whether it's Dominic Cooper's portrayal or John Slattery, who they I think they both fill in both halves of his life like perfectly. Um, but I think especially John Slattery and especially in this movie, um, it's just like fantastic. Like, and when he, when the car crashes and he's still alive and, and Bucky, you know, grabs his head and he recognizes him and he's like, and he's like, Sergeant Barnes, like, even though it had been 50, like almost 50 years, like 45 years since he had last seen him, like, and he just goes like Sergeant Barnes, like he's so like confused and then he just freaking cold just murders him like oh my god just bashing his head in over and over like it's not even like it was just like a quick like like sniper bullet to the head or like to the chest or something it's like he like bashed his head in on the on the car and then on the ground and then when he goes and he he not even with his winter soldier metal arm with his actual hand strangles like maria stark i'm like oh my god like how do you even yeah. come back for this character and now it's like with falcon and Winter Soldier. you know bucky's one of the best character like one of my favorite characters in the whole yeah. franchise but it's like how do you come back from this guy like in mm-hmm. the way that like you kind of said brandon like you go into the movie and you're like oh of course it's like team cap like caps making the logical sense making all this stuff and over the course of the film the cat the captain america movie slowly shows you that like Steve makes mistakes. He makes big mistakes. Like, and this is kind of, it's, it's the culmination of the mistakes that he's made. And like you were talking about earlier, the thing that, Mm -hmm. you know, ultimately, if you want to say like holds him back from being worthy, he has been keeping this lie to protect the, basically the memory of his old best friend from his new best friend. And it's like, he can't do that. And then it all comes to a head and he still feels like he's in the right. And it's like, you are not in the right, like by any mm-hmm. stretch of the imagination, like you, and now, and also I know that he's trying to kill Bucky, obviously, and you're going to be defensive of that, but you got to understand it a little bit from Tony's perspective. You know what I mean? Like, and I just love that. Right, they, I love like, that they had the balls to do that in a captain America movie. Ultimately in the last 15, 20 minutes, make kind of cap the, the the villain like the against villain, tony yeah. yeah and it's like, like that is just so cool and then of course everything you said with the airport battle roadie and vision and wanda and black you know like hi i'm clint i don't Queen's care and then, yeah, yeah, yeah like and and everything with spider-man yeah. peter is and absolutely zemo. fantastic yep. and of course zemo absolutely amazing villain mm-hmm. great uh, one of the few villains that his mm-hmm. plan actually works yeah scott mm. absolutely like I th- oh I th- man i thought it was a water truck and he's like caps like <laughs> like because he just like threw it um yeah. and then he i love where he goes when he hands the shield back to cap because he like random like scott randomly catches the shield and he's like yeah. he's like captain america your shield <laughs> like he's like this yeah. is yours like um and then there's like the great like he, where he goes captain america thanks for thanking of me <laughs> <laughs> it's just like oh my yeah. god it's so freaking funny oh, yeah. that is so funny again, TJ? what yeah what number, number was it what no, number no, was no, Civil oh, War? Oh, oh, uh, five. Five. Oh, you're wild you're wild uh, it's i know it's fantastic it's fantastic <laughs> but Civil war is so I good than, i think it's better than my no, by far. we need to talk about my number one because i need to... oh yeah let's fucking I, talk about this how the fuck yeah. me and brandon have been agreeing on a lot i don't know about this one though okay so infinity war Lead up to Endgame, fucking movie starts off with a gun punch, fucking kill Loki. You think, oh, fucking Hulk's got this. Fucking, fucking, he gets two jabs in Thanos. Thanos fucking like, oh, could, might as well just break his neck. He brings his back. He's like, throws him down on the ground. Fucking Bruce Banner's done. And then you have, it could all be done. It could all have been over. Peter Quill just, you know, kept his cool for like two seconds. They would have got the glove off. Kumbaya, we're all going home didn't happen fucking thanos is fucking they throw tony stark throws a fucking like planet thing at him and he fucking is out of it and he does the thing and then like dr strange and thanos going back and forth with those cool special oh, effects is fucking amazing sick. Oh fight my God. one of the best solo fights one-on-one fights thanos and just dr. strange and to top it all off the best one of my most sad and best moments of the movie is 
They're all running at him slow mo. He's throwing them all aside. We have Wanda trying to fight him. We have Wanda breaking the the stone and Vision's head, oh. and Vision says it's okay. Oh my god! Oh, my and then god. he dies, and oh, and then you think it's over, and then he rewinds time and takes the fucking stone. Oh god, oh. so good. I just my can't. man's my man's Vision got killed twice in the span of two minutes, man. <laughs> Um, oh my god one of the the, like most to me one of the most frightening things thanos does in any of these movies is after wanda kills vision he when thanos like takes his bare hand and like grabs wanda's head and is like they're there it's like you fucking like what the fuck like that is like one of the most like sadistic things i've ever seen a supervillain do like you just watch that he knows what he's about to do and he's like and he like grabs her head and is like stroking her hair and is like and it's like they're there little one like mm-hmm. it's gonna be okay like you know yeah. and then <laughs> just like what the fuck like what a and, fucking oh my god and an it's uh sorry and cap showing up uh in the middle of the movie or towards the beginning his show gives you chills every time you hear the theme yep, song right. he grabs the thing yep <laughs> fantastic and um what was the other thing uh obviously everybody getting dusted is heartbreaking um you know Groot passing away or going and then rock going Groot, he's gone oh, yeah. oh my god and um there's one there's one other thing i was thinking of that's like oh god uh what was it gamora like, gamora of course yeah yeah, yeah. um Sorry, I'm like brushing over Gamora. I apologize. Yeah, no. And uh, it's just like another thing. There's that I like something else. What a great Red Skull line. I don't remember what the other when, thing was. But... When Thanos starts crying on Boromir and she's like, oh, yeah. tears, you're pathetic. And he goes, yeah, yeah not for him. <laughs> she goes, oh, fucking um, just Yeet. like Thanos. Like you get it. Like you get why he's doing what he's doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, it's just like that you, it's a villain that you sort of understand. You can get but, behind almost. It's like, but, oh, okay, you're crazy. I, <laughs> it's like the kings. It's like the Kingsman with with uh, yeah. Samuel Jackson's character, where he's like, it's right. like global warming and everything. So you got to kill half the population yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. You got to make population. I crazy. like that Thanos is like understandable and stuff. Like it's very. I just love the juxtaposition of 2018 Thanos and then 2014 Thanos in Endgame. Mm-hmm. Because it's like 2018 Thanos, like he's like on a go- he's like on a mission for like the quote Blues Brothers, he's on a mission from God. Like he's he's like taking off his armor, putting the stones in. He's like becoming more and more like untouchable. Like he's got this like energy flowing through him that he's like I am about to ascend to being the most powerful being in the universe type of thing. And then I love the juxtaposition of. 2014 thanos in endgame is just he's just like a brawler like he's just like i will kill yeah. you i will kill this universe i will take what does he say he's like i will take this universe down to its last atom and rebuild like that like that kind of thing and i just love i love the difference in that character like just the difference that those few years in his life made. yeah um yeah. just seeing, josh like, brolin just different things. perfect choice josh brolin Oops. is well, i think josh brolin again on the topic of underrated things in this universe josh brolin in general his performances mm-hmm. as thanos i think are overlooked because it's like yeah. people look at thanos and, and in a in a sense it shows how great his performance is because people look at thanos and they just see thanos you know what i mean but it's like that's josh brolin putting in that work you know he's on mm-hmm. set in, with the big shoulders you know He's on set doing the mocap, do like emoting everything that Thanos is doing. Uh, I think Thanos in general is the he looks best. Fantastic. I think he's the best yeah. digital character ever on film. I mean, you yeah, think about the fact that the amazing. same the same tech that makes Thanos possible is the same tech that they invented for Jar Jar Binks. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the, the, like from point A to point B of that. Like, I remember being, I remember cleaning a theater where the trailers had already started, like we must have been super behind or something, because I was standing right next to the screen when they played a trailer for Infinity War, and it was that scene of him on Titan where he's it's like his, his like shoulders, like when he's walking out yeah. of a thing. And I remember looking at his shoulder, like with my like probably a couple feet away from the movie screen, so you could see all the detail. And I was like, they've got like arm, they've got like tiny arm hairs yeah. on this guy. Like this is like the crazy and this is a trailer 
not even the finished mm. movie. Like, it's like this is a crazy CG character. Yeah. So good, such high quality. All right, Brandon. All right, real quick, I'm gonna wrap this up. Yeah, really we'll quickly wrap everything explain, up. Yeah, I'll explain why Infinity War was just a little yeah. bit lower than everything else. So <laughs> well, more it was six. So it's six. Oh, no, it's six. It's still high. Yeah. It's still high. It's still your top yeah, ten. Yeah. So it, it's just the the beginning of the movie is just too slow. I thought it was just too a little too long. They needed to shorten it just a little bit like with the other movies i thought they were the perfect length avengers one maybe but like i already said like that was just out of world experience to see them all together and whatever but infinity war obviously snap probably one of the greatest like oh my god moments in all cinematic history like Mm. i wasn't around for i am your father blah 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 uh but so it's one of the greatest like oh my gosh moments in cinematic history um the fight with Thulk, the Hulk that you mentioned really showed how powerful Thanos was. I thought they did a great job, like, right off the bat. Like, that's how powerful he is. Right, like, exactly. He, like, yeah. he takes Hulk and he manhandles him. Like, <laughs> yeah. Hulk was manhandling otherworldly things, and now he is being manhandled mm-hmm. by Thanos. And, like, that mm-hmm. just, like, sets right there. That's how strong he is. It's not going to be easy to beat this guy. So it's, like, insurmountable odds. All the middle stuff with Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor, the whole thing with, like, oh, you know Thor, blah, 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 that whole thing where they all meet up um, and do the whole fight with Thanos at the end was Mm -hmm. pretty good. The only issue I have with the ending, and this is not by fault of its own, it's just, like, I want to leave satisfied. And I thought, like, the snap, like I said, was great. I can only imagine what it was like for, like I said, the Star Wars 5 ending. It's like, I know there's another movie coming after this, but, like, I, I just want... like I, That's why I don't like splitting a story up into two. Like, I, I don't mm. like Harry Potter, Deathly Hallows 1 and 2. I don't like... And I don't like these movies, period. But, like, I don't like how they did Mockingjay 1 and 2. Like, it just felt right. like... It, it's just... There's too long of a wait. They did the same thing with Twilight, it right? Gave, yeah, and it gave me just such a sour taste in my mouth that, like, I have to wait another two years to, like, really figure out what's going to happen here. And it's just, mm-hmm. like, I can go back and watch it, but I know that it's not the end. And, like, I went into the movie thinking, like, this is going to, like, either wrap up something or it's going to be, like, it's going to end at a point where, like, they either, like, find out what they need to do and then the whole last movie is just, like, fighting him and whatever. But, like I said, I alluded to the Gamora scene was really good. Uh, just like the fights throughout it, Thanos being the main villain is really good. I don't think anybody's going to top him as a main Avengers villain. He was there since day one with uh, the first Avengers. Like that drop in the first Avengers, I thought was another reason why. I also put a lot of these reasons, I didn't even touch into these. End credit scenes were huge. And I thought that like a lot of these did, a lot of these movies did really well with their end credit scenes. And I thought Avengers mm-hmm. 1 did that really well with the whole Thanos thing. So Same with Age of Ultron. Yep. The fine, I'll do it myself. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's... It's a really good movie. I just... There was more impact with that 43 and a half or 42 and a half minutes of fighting at the end of Endgame. And then yeah, Avengers totally 1 was just, that. Special, yeah. was just special to me. So it's just... Infinity War just by default has to be number three. I maybe could put it ahead of Winter, Winter Soldier at five. I probably could watch it over Winter Soldier if I like had to pick between the two, but like mm-hmm. I don't know, my top four is pretty set. Like, yeah, yeah. All right. Cool. Well, I mean, let us know what you guys thought. Uh, we went for a cool. Do you have any guesses on the time? Three, three fifteen hours. Huh? Brandon, what? Brandon said three and a half. I said three fifteen. We are at three thirty eight. So wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I think we'll cut it there. Um, yeah. But yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us on that. We said it was gonna be it's fiftieth episode, so we went a little a little crazy, we went a little long. We wanted to give you guys a nice uh episode for you. Um so yeah, let us know uh what what are your top ten uh for the MCU? What were your thoughts on Black Widow? Uh what were your thoughts on, you know, anything in general? You know, that kind of thing. Uh but uh that'll do it for me. I am one of your hosts, Sean Monk. You can follow me at Pacing Yak um, on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, you can also check out our merch store in the video uh, description down below. Uh, yeah. Brandon? 
Oh yeah. Uh, well, first, I would like to thank you guys for having me on for the fiftieth episode. I've done this a couple of times, and I thought this was by far the most enjoyable one because I really do like talking about the MCU and just my opinion on everything. Mm-hmm. And I like hearing others' opinions. And like all of your all of your points were very valid. We may differ on some here and there, but like we said, we had a lot of the similar. Like it'd be like, oh, that's also my number, yeah. or whatever. So mm-hmm. like, I felt like we have a pretty good grasp of where we all fall in the mcu line so it really enjoyable but yeah well uh, guess what i got we'll have you on for star wars I guarantee you we're gonna differ in that department <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah i mean not number nine we will, not, <laughs> we will definitely have the similar with that but yeah probably but uh once again just grateful to be here it's super fun to be on so i appreciate it uh we'd love to having you um and my name is tj cornwell uh, you can follow me at TJ underscore on Twitter uh, at TJ underscore Cornwell on Twitter, Instagram, Brandon, where can they find you? I don't think you said that. Uh, I'm, I'm at underscore brand dope. So B R A N D O P E and Twitter. And then Instagram is the same thing, but with just another underscore after the name. So if you want gotcha. to find me on either of those, uh, and you got, uh, your Twitch is also, uh, on screen. Oh, uh, well. sp- yeah. Spider underscore brand. I do stream from time to time a lot with these guys. So, it is if you ever find uh gaming to be a passion i do really enjoy playing through story modes multiplayers whatever it's just whatever i'm feeling that night so i do game a lot though Mm -hmm. um don't forget to like comment subscribe let us know like sean said top 10 mcu maybe what you thought of some of the news stories we discussed briefly what you thought of black widow and we will see you next time All right. L.